Hey, I'm Carl Miller, and this is the Derek Perry. Per, see? Perry Siglio show. Can I drive you? Can I drive you? Perry Siglio. Perry Siglio. Perry Siglio. Everybody and welcome to another episode of the Derek Prentisiglio Show. Remember to follow us on YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button down below. The more followers and watchers and viewers we get, the more shows we can bring you. Also remember to follow us on social media, Facebook at the same name, the Derek Prentisiglio Show. We're also on Twitter, which is now called X, at Real DP Show, and also at Real DP Show on Instagram as well. Uh, we're blowing up. We're on Race in America now, we're on Tubi, we're on Fubo, so uh, check us out on any of those apps. They are available on some of the new televisions that are sold out there. But today's episode, we have got one of the legends of Long Island Modified Racing, and he has got tons of stories. He brought a bunch of pictures with him as well. Carl Miller joins us, and Carl, thank you, and uh, we definitely appreciate you coming by here. Pleasure. I'm honored and, and thrilled to be here. Actually, I'm kind of shocked to figure you're scraping the bottom of the barrel to get <laughs> Somebody like me to come in, but no, no, no. Uh, I, we I've, like storytellers, well, I, I, and I've always been told that that you know I have a hundred stories of just I've been around so much. You know, between my dad being a flag man at Islip Speedway and being such an icon that he was, mm -hmm. I got to meet so many of the people. You know, the, the legends, the Bugsy Stevens, the, you know, the Cooks, Freddie DeSaros, all of those guys, and got to know them. And so that as a kid and then going to work for Freddie Harback later on as another legend, you know, so it, it put me in great, I always said I was, I was so lucky growing up because I was at so many of the great places as a young kid, you know, it just, I was just fortunate. Well, well then you also drove a NASCAR modified for yep. years. Yep. You, you ran at Islip Speedway yep. back in Long Island, Riverhead yep. Raceway as well. Yep. I remember seeing your race modifieds growing up as a kid. That's cool. Uh, it, you know, the, the red number 99 cars. Yep. Uh, uh, but uh, your dad had also raced too before becoming a flag man, didn't he? Yeah, Freeport Speedway for from '57 on till '64, and my, my dad's claim to fame was um, back in that era. He used to talk about appearance money, right? This guy used to get appearance money, da da da. da. And my dad always said he goes, "I'm the only guy that got paid disappearance money," because <laughs> he wasn't very good, and and and. Back then, the Concies at Freeport Speedway used to pay a decent amount. Like, they were only racing for $400 to win or something like that for the features. Well, for some reason, the Concies used to pay yeah, like a, 400 back in 1970 yeah, or 60 No, what? $60. This is, That's you know, a lot so, of money which back is, then. Right, right, right. It was like three, $400. Right. Well, for some reason, the Concies used to pay like 100 mm -hmm. I don't know why, the, but... So my dad was a weapon. I mean, there's no two ways about it. <laughs> so the one he was starting on the pole, da da da. They, and then his that's the only thing he only won one race in his life, and it was a Conzi, right? Okay. Because the guys kind of let him win, right? Okay. So the next week he's on the pole again for the Conzi, and the guys are like, "This is not good." So they took a collection. Ten. There was ten guys in the Conzi. Ten dollars each. They chipped in for him to not race. <laughs> <laughs> And he took so anyway, he, and he tell he was proud of telling that story. But when he climbed in that flag stand, that was his home, man. He was he was the man. He was you know? magical. And it, get back to that, my dad always told me he was a New York City cop, right? By uh, that's his, what he, his, 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 his real job. job, right? His I mean, cop, job. detective, worked undercover and stuff like oh, that. Oh, so he was playing clothes. Okay, yeah, yeah right, later on, he he was started out as a motorcycle mechanic, mm -hmm. you know, cop mechanic. Didn't do, and then used to ride the parades and stuff like that, um, and then. In 63, 4, when motorcycles became the big thing, they didn't know what they were or how to identify them. My dad was a motorcycle mechanic. Well, they made him a detective to train everybody. Mm -hmm. on, and then he worked playing clothes, undercover, you know, the whole nine yards. So he got caught up in that, what they called the NAP Commission, and that was bad news that they, the bad cops were trying to get rid of the good cops. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to, my dad got caught up in that. You know, my dad was by the book kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So he hated that for that. And then being a race car driver, he kind of hated, not hated being, but he wasn't good at it. So later on, after all we did, now I worked as an official, as a runner, all this, my, as a kid with my dad. Because then by 66, he was flagging races. I'm 10 years old, so that's where I was going. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And I enjoyed, but, yeah, man, I liked them cars, you know, and we got hooked up into buying Paul McElhinney's old street stock when I was working for Freddie Harback. Mm-hmm. And now, the, how old were the, you at the time? 20, so it was 87, 22, something like that. You started 22. driving at 22. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, street stock. Like I said, we bought McElhinney street stock. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time, my dad was flagging Freeport 
not Iceland. They split then. This was seventy. This was seventy nine. Right. And uh, Freeport, when they ran the street stock division, they didn't throw any cautions. They wouldn't stop the race till the track was blocked, and they would throw a red flag. And my dad hated that. It's dangerous for the day. Yeah, it was te- but that was part of the show. It was almost like a rolling demolition derby. Oh, wow. But that's the way Freeport ran it. Well, my dad hated it, and he told Don Campy, he goes, I will not work this. He, he said, you can get somebody else to flag. I will not flag these races, right? And you got Dale Sullivan used to would flag it. And he told me, he said, I won't even be. He goes, I'm going to concession stand. Do he goes, I don't even want to be there, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> fast forward. Tell my dad, oh, we're going, this is free. Islip now has just started their street stock division in 79. So we got the hot idea to do this. So I call my old man up. I go, yeah, we're thinking about going racing. I bought a car from Paul McAleese with street stock. My dad was mad, <laughs> mad, because he told me as a kid. He says, now, being a cop, this is an end this is with a deer mint. Miller, you ever become a cop, I'll break your leg. <laughs> You ever become a break race car driver? I'll break both your legs. <laughs> well, he, so, he, did, he didn't break your legs. Though. No. That, that well, but he was not happy, right? right. Mm-hmm. So we build the car. We go out. I said, no, it's different. They race it like a real race. Cautions. You know, it's a real thing. Da, 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 da. Whole, no, no problem, right? So he's not happy. We're building a race car, and I'm still working for Freddie Harback. This is 79, right? We're doing everything. We're doing racing, winning races, da, 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 da. I'm working his body shop. And he knows we're building the car. We'd, I mean, I worked in a body shop from nine till. You're building the street stock. Yeah. Okay. So you know, what did for, you have to change on it? You, you, it was already built. No, right? we had a build. We, we bought it for two hundred bucks. Oh. It was nothing. It was just a '65 Mustang. Nothing in it. Just the rear end. Everything else was, and it was no cage or nothing. Uh, no, it was, but it was destroyed. They raced it at Freeport. It was destroyed. Oh, really? We had a cut. <laughs> We're bad. I mean, think about it. 65 Mustangs. In my street stock career, three years, we cut up three 65 Mustangs for body parts. Wow. So now the, the, the car that you bought, though, uh, Paul was running at Freeport. At, just at Freeport. At Freeport. And it was, was, it was. So this was before the, the, like the, the, the Brown 98 that he ran at Islip, right? Right. It was the 100 then at the time. In fact, the first okay. year he ran Islip, he ran it as the 100. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Because we were allowed the three-digit numbers then until NASCAR come in with Winston and the scoreboard, and you had to go to the two-digit numbers. Mm-hmm. And he went to the 98, which was his brother's modified number. Okay. When Joel owned a modified that Danny McNamara used to drive. Gotcha. It was the 98, and that's where that came from. So anyway, with Paul, we had a lot of work to do. You know, like I said, we so had now you've got this bus thing. You put and then, like I said, I'm working in the body shop from 9, well, we worked at Freddy's, so 10, and 30 <laughs> yeah uh till one or two and then from two o'clock on we worked on the modified till nine ten o'clock at night and ten o'clock at night i worked on the, we went and worked on the mustang till three four o'clock in the morning uh, and then back Fre- in yeah and freddie work. knew this right okay and never you know it was like ah, okay da, 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 da. got the car all done we're gonna go race and it was i slipped in had the um the fair that's just when the comedies had taken over, I slip and all that. And they used to run the, the Suffolk County Fair the whole two or three weeks there. But on Friday nights, they ran the street stocks and something like a midget or something was one. And Saturday night yeah. was the ice slip with the fair going on. At right. the, it was cool. It mm-hmm. really was. Ray, so that Ray got, Plax just used to promote the midget races that were there. Okay. I mean, they were like an open race. Right. Because I remember my yeah. father, you, he he would compete in a couple of them, which right. was great because we would leave the house in Ronkonkoma and just go right down the road to Islip Speedway right. and, and race them. Nice. Right. It was fun. Yeah. You know, so, and then I think Sundays was the figure eights. They had this, you know, so that's how, that's what it was. So Friday night, so we know we're going racing. Freddie's, so I'm getting ready to leave to go to the racetrack. I was like, you know, at three o'clock. I was like, Freddie, I'm going to leave a little early. He goes, yeah, no problem. He goes, when you walk out that door, Millie, you're fired. It's like, what? Never said a word to me the whole time. He goes, you going racing? He goes, you're done. You're fired. He goes, you're not. He goes, either you're working here or you're going racing. I'm like, I'm Spend all this money, I'll go, I'm, all right, I guess I'm out the door, I'll see you, bye. Freddie said that to you. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. No right? kidding. Yeah. Why didn't he tell yeah. you that beforehand while you were building the car? Well, it goes on. Okay. And my, like I said, my dad's not happy either, mm-hmm. right? Okay, I'm coming out. So we go out, and then they had like 30, because they ran 
the Freeport cars with us, whatever cars we were trying to build ourselves, and they let the figure eight cars run with us, mm -hmm. right, to make sure we had cars. So 30 cars, you picked out of the hat for starting spots, right? I don't know, it was 15, 16 cars in the heat race, they're taking three, right? I picked like 12th in the heat race. Finished second, right? It was awesome, right? I'm like, holy, all right, through track, all right, this and that. And then my dad had just gotten there after the heat race. He didn't see practice. And we told him, oh, yeah, yeah, qualified. You know, we told him the whole story. Oh, okay, you know, that's cool. Pick for the feature. Pick 18th, right? Okay. Out of? 26 picked. And then there was 30 cars. 26 you know, on a quarter mile. Yeah. Oh, I think we started like, uh, I think, probably, I think we started 26. So I think it was uh, 20 picked. Mm -hmm. And then whatever came out of the concert, it was like 24. They used to start for the All-Star League race at, the, at Islip, the, yeah. the All-Star 300, which is now the Islip 300. Yeah, actually, on it. 26 on a fifth mile. Islip yeah, was fifth. a fifth mile. Fifth. Yeah. Well, for that All-Star 300, they used to start like 32 cars. Wow. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, right? I think, what is it? It's only 24 or 26 now in yeah, uh, they, the modified tour. they can even so, get that. You but, know? Uh, so anyway, so I picked 18, right? Oh, God, here we go. Uh, we'll have a million laps. Finished third, right? My dad was nuts because figured he couldn't race, didn't have the talent to do it. Right? He was nuts. He didn't right? Know if you were he, do it. he was absolutely nuts. He was what? He was so excited. It was like a kid with a new baby. You know, he was like couldn't do it. So he loved. So then we get all done. We're sitting there drinking beers, and Freddie comes walking up. He was at the track, and I'm like, I can't fire you. He says, but. I know what's going to happen, and that's all he ever said. And he told me later on, he goes, I knew you had gone. He says, I knew it was just a matter of time you were going to be in a modified, and I was going to be racing against you. He goes, he's seen, you know, like I said, if you show the one picture we have here at Freddy's. <laughs> Let's see this. We yeah, rent, I love we, that you brought these photos we, over, too. We, we rented the racetrack, you know, because you used to do that back then, mm -hmm. and that's me in the car. Looking and at that, the camera. Yeah, looking, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, big smart ass, you know. <laughs> and what but year was that? 19... That's 76 or 77, I so, think it was. When, uh, when, what year did you start running street stocks? 79. So, okay, so you drove that before you ever drove a street stock. Yeah. Oh, okay, and cool. It, and, and then what happened is we were at the track there. I'm only, like the other guys got in the car and they were just like, I'm in it, right? Almost only like a tenth off of what he was running that day at practice. It, we like I said we rented the track, so it was only like four or five of us there. Right. right. But see, I learned that day. We stopped Norman Tosti, who was Freddie's car owner, came over to me and he goes, "Let me tell you something." And I never forgot this. He goes, "I'm watching you." He goes, "Now just know you're on the steering wheel." He goes, "You could." He goes, "But as soon as you start doing this, you're done because you're not you're losing control of the car. You can win the corner." Turn the wheel. Because you had no power steering, right? No, we had power steering. Oh, okay. But he was okay. talking about the car starting to get, you got striving to drive over your head, you're not smooth anymore. You're starting to, and then that's, so I went and I caught myself starting to do this and I see Norman go, all right. And I always remember that. So if I started doing sawing on the wheel, I would back take it down. It, back it down mm -hmm. and, and, and I tell guys that all the time today. That's, and I always remember. So that, and that was the start. I'm like, and Freddie said he knew right there that day that he was going to be racing against me someday. And then I was in the Modified by 84. Wow. In his car. He sold me one of his cars. So, so anyway. Yeah, you bought one but of it was cars. But that was Freddie. That's the way Freddie was. He goes, yeah, if you're right. He goes, oh, I just want to see if he was serious, you know. That is cool. So, now, eventually, yeah. this whole uh, career, driving a Modified and all that, eventually took you down south. Uh, we're going to jump around a little bit, too. So Yeah, like, there's so much. We're, just, right. we're generalizing right yep. from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, drove, yeah, you, you drove for a while. You yep. had family uh, history in the sport, yep. and then eventually brought you down south to, to spotting, too. Right. Um, you uh, spotted for all the series, right? Trucks, yep. uh, Truck, Xfinity. Xfinity, and, cup, and cup, right. My first cup race was 1997. Um Atlanta, when they extended Atlanta the first time. When they added the quad oval. And Jeff Bonin qualified at 197 miles an hour or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was spot for Kenny Wallace in the Square D car. Okay. And that was the first cup race that I did. And it was funny because there was no, the spotter stand used to be on what was now the back stretch. Mm -hmm. And they had nothing really set up on the front stretch at all. So it was split. So the NASCAR officials were going to be on the back stretch. So, and it, was, it wasn't like it is today where you, 
it was kind of they wanted you with the NASCAR official, but they they knew they didn't have it set up, so they were like, well, you could either be here or you can go do the front be on the front stretch. So it was split. There were some guys that went somewhere on the front stretch. I don't know where they went because right. there was nothing set up. This is before and they it, had all their guys yeah, gathered in one yeah, spot. Right. And it, so that was a race I did. So there was only like maybe even maybe half the field with the NASCAR officials that figured, oh, my first deal, I'm going to do what NASCAR wants me to do and stuff. So I remember telling, um, was it Kenny Moore or something, I think was the crew chief. I said, uh, they had the two scoring pylons, which was off of turn four. You know, it actually was right by where, like, where the trial, you know, where the quad oval mm-hmm. was stuff. So I said, look, I could see everything from there that I just can't see from the two pylons. So he had to work the front stretch from there. I mean, his, like my first race, all I go, they're averaging 197 miles an hour. It's like, it was crazy. Now, was just, uh, uh, what led you down to spotting? Because I remember you, know, you driving for years uh, and then I, you I weren't, your car wasn't right. there for a while. Right. And I heard that you went down south. Now, how well, I, moved, you, I moved here in 92, right? And then when we get back to that, and I got Freddie called me to go back to him back for the last race that he won when he went out. Right. And won his last race and all that. That's another great story. But so I came down here looking. I was there for that. Well, well, I'll I'll tell you what happened. Oh, I'll tell you. Yep. Yeah, no, I will. Don't get it. No, 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 I know. Right. Exactly. That's (laughs) it. Tell me. I was like, that's my problem. I do jump around so much, but there's so much that goes on in your life, as we all know. But anyway, so um, I came down here just to get involved in racing i just things weren't going well on the island and had enough and so you know, come down here and i had a buddy what were you doing for a living on long island uh, um teddy wisnowski had an import export business mm-hmm. and i had worked for and teddy had already passed away and just there was it was family problem with him with the money and the family and i was getting it just wasn't good so i just and it just wasn't happening you know mm-hmm. so i was like yeah we i had a buddy of mine that that worked for uh um he was Eddie now. I don't know if you know Eddie now, cop. Yeah, they used to call him the, mm-hmm. uh, the crooked cop. The, yeah. He was good friends with right, I know the Budweiser know. guy, he worked and they nicked him. Charlotte Motor Speedway for a little while. Exactly, yeah, yeah, super nice guy. Right. Exactly, awesome. Mm-hmm. Right, so I was good friends with him because from Park, he used to work with Steve uh, Bob Park's mm-hmm. thing. Oh. So uh, <laughs> You're good. he got uh, um, he was down here. He was with the Budweiser guys, and I used to hang out with them from like. 90, 91, I'd go to a bunch of races with him. Got to know the guy, so got in the idea of coming down here and maybe going somewhere in the shop and just just sweep a floor just to get involved. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. And so I come down here to do that. And, um, yeah, bounced around here and there. I got involved in a body shop with a guy I used to know and stuff. And then, you know, it's funny. I don't have I, – I did some – I think it was Hooters Cup stuff I was doing. I was helping out a guy, a kid named Andy Thurman helping him out on his car and then I started I think I started doing some spotting with him that kind of got me into the spotting mm-hmm. deal and we ran really good with him and then he was I thought well that's what he was working for the square D team as a tire changer and um, like I said we'd done a bunch of racing and Andy run really good we run top three top four and uh, how I, I, I'm pretty sure that's how that came about because you kind of forget and uh, I think that she kind of mentioned to him, hey, I got my guy spotted at this and that. Let's, and that was it. I mean, that, I never like went somewhere else with him. Like, okay, we're going to take you to Atlanta and spot for Kenny Wallace in his brand new ride. Wow. You know? Okay. It was great. We did all right. The following year, I, I only lasted. That was uh, Andy Petrie racing, right? Didn't he have No, the Andy, this team? is way before Andy. It was way, okay. This is before, I can't even think of the guy that used to own the name. He wound up becoming a partner, or Andy bought into that deal okay. later on. But yeah, this is before Andy Petrie. Okay. Like I said, this was 97, and then 98 was going to be Kenny's big year and all that. We went to Daytona and didn't qualify. I bet you Kenny could tell us who the, who the owner was. Uh, yeah. He always, I he's always got those yeah, stories. Yeah. It. And it, it, it just didn't go well. You know, whatever. And things just didn't work out and then did a few things and then got to be known that, oh, yeah, call's pretty good. Spot. You know, and you know how it is. It's just certain word of mouth. Word of mouth. Uh, hey, we need a spot here and then da 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 and, you know, it just, it just went on from there, you know, and certain, you know, somebody needed to fill in here and then, oh, okay, you had a good run. Oh, you're pretty good at this and, that's now, who, who are some of the guys that you have spotted for over the years? Because we've talked. I mean, you've chatted. You've told me about guys that you've worked with that yeah. are that have gone on to great stuff. Some yeah. guys that are, are right. not with us anymore. Right. You know. um, it's the entire Bodine family. Um, we had Todd in here. Yeah, I know. I see. Yeah, he filled in for me the other day when you he was get me last bit. Oh yeah, Todd's Todd's great. We've had we had a lot of fun together at uh, Jermaine's and all that. 
Um, but I, I mean, Todd, I mean, I, I make this kind of funny quote that I, I've spotted for um, Petty, Andretti, and Earnhardt. I spotted for oh, Adam yeah. Petty one time at Arca, just to fill in somewhere, practice that oh, somebody. Really? And yeah, so one of the Arca deals. So I, I got to do Adam just that one time. I've spotted for Jeffrey Earnhardt a bunch of times, driving Jay Roberts and stuff at Premium and this and that. And I spotted for John Andretti when he was driving for Kelly Arbrow. Yeah, I spotted okay. him. So it's like I said, I make that, you know, I was, yeah, I spotted for those three pr pretty big names, you know, it was like, but uh, one of the most fun guys I spotted for was we were at Joe Bessie's deal mm -hmm. when, uh, and that's when Jeff got hurt. And that's how I wound up getting that spotting gig because they needed, Jeff got hurt at Daytona that, when he almost got in killed in that truck oh, deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was driving for Joe Bessie, the power team deal. Mm -hmm. So they were going to Rockingham and they had, um, they put Ted Musgrave in the car. And I had spotted for Ted somewhere, right? The, couple ra the, year, the year before that, a couple races. And somebody mentioned that, oh, hey, Carl spotted for Ted. Why don't we get him? And it worked. I mean, I had a lot of fun with Joe, Bessie, and that whole team. And then Ted got out of it, and then Trickle got in it. Oh, my God. That Never had any more fun, except for Steve Park. And it, when his truck deal, because that's so his family. For Dick Trickle, too? Dick Trickle, yeah. No kidding. Yeah, love to get on the radio. I was, all right, Trick, you got a copy? Wall to wall and treetop tall. You know, it just, <laughs> just so much fun. Did, I mean, uh, did you ever interrupt him through any of his cigarette breaks? Or uh, yeah, during a caution, you, like you'd get on it, you were talking to him, or uh, Jim Long was the crew chief at the time. Mm -hmm. And he'd go like, all right, Dick, well, you know, this and that. And he'd be like, no answer, no. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm lighting a freaking cigarette, you know? <laughs> and then he had that, you know, full-faced mask mm -hmm. with the hole drilled in it. <laughs> and that's how he smoked his cigarette. Right, right. You know, it was so, but yeah, he was just a lot of fun. Like, I'll never forget. He had a cigarette lighter in the car, yes, right? in the car. Right, like actually yes, like a push-in one, yeah. like the electric. Yeah. Like. yeah, so did Freddie Harback. <laughs> Freddie Harback had one in his car all the time. God. All the time had a cigarette lighter in the, in, in the race car. car. In the race car. What are these guys thinking? Right? Well, it was, it was, he was that was cool. Yeah, you know, he thought. Was it, me, but it he never, Rob, wasn't it Robin Power or at least a little bit or? No, because it was just hooked in. I mean, you weren't lighting it all the time. You like, like Freddie only used it for practice and stuff like That's that. That's so funny. But, but yeah, Trick had it in there all the time. But I'll never forget we're at Talladega, we're racing and getting going. So I, you know, checking with radio. So I Trick, I said, let me know if you know. Then they were just starting to get crazy, running three wide like all day mm -hmm. kind of thing. And if you got in the middle, a lot of times you got shuffled out. It was bad. So I come on the radio. I said, all right, Dick, let me know where you want to run. If you want to run inside and outside or if you want to run in the middle. He goes, there ain't going to be none running in no middle shit today. He goes, "Not they ain't going to do that crap, you know. I'm like, okay. So they dropped the green flag, and he's going with it. And if you had the right car, the middle worked. And he gets in with five laps in and gets hooked up with somebody and to the front, right, in the middle. And he's like, well, Spot, I just ruined your freaking day because it's going to be in the middle all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, I've, we finished seventh or eighth or something, maybe. That was that the trickle. But yeah, that was, I was like, but that's the way, you know, it was fun. He's like, yeah, I just ruined your day. I was like, yeah. I, I said, no problem. Let's go, man. You know, so, but he was just, he was a lot of fun. And I'll never forget. For guys like us, though, <clears throat> because you have to remember, you know, like guys like us, we grew up uh, racing on Long Island. Uh, your car was number 99 because right. you were such a huge fan of Jeff Bodine's 99. Then the you Valiant. go then you go to spot for them, you know, in That's, racing. And then yeah. guys like Dick yep. Trickle, like, I mean, we were from Long Island. We were modified people, but we heard who Dick Trickle was. Yeah, right. you, you know, we knew who oh my God. all those guys, Gary Ballou was, and those yeah. guys from down south, uh, uh, you know, Butch Lindley yeah. and, and, you know, Sam Ard. We knew those guys yeah. that were late model yeah. sportsman guys. Right. Well, and then and I was, get the spot for them. Yeah. I, I mean, I was fortunate. Like I said, I've said that. And that was my point with being so fortunate because as a young kid, the track with my dad, my dad was such an icon. Well, and then he introduced me to these guys, to Bugsy's and Freddie DeSaro's. And, all, and I got to know them as friends. You know, like Charlie was a great friend of all. I mean, uh, I got some good Charlie Zombeck stories. And, but, <laughs> cool. Well, that's uh, yeah, right. And, exactly. and then Richie, I mean, we, we, we stayed with Richie in, at the Safari Beach Hotel for like six or seven years th for during Daytona. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got to know, you know, Richie and all them real good. But so, you know, Richie was later because, but. Bugsy and then Charlie, like I said, they, and got to be friends with them, but then got to race with them, you know, you know, not because yeah, you did yeah. race with Charlie yeah, and Richie right. and all of those exactly. guys, right? I, one of the coolest things that happened 
my for 84, I'm going to Pocono for the race of champions at, at you know, on the three quarter mile. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing there talking to Charlie. You know, we're just hanging out talking. In fact, I think we were through, um, yeah, we had practice. Um, yeah, we had run one practice, I think it was, and then uh, maybe we started race. But we had a good break or whatever it was. So I went over to Charlie, and I'm telling him, hey, my car's doing this and that. I go, look, I'm not near your class. I said, but it's doing this, doing that. What, you know, what do you think? So he says, oh, I changed this spring, you know, da 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 da. You know, it was, it was, car was a little tight or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. He goes, let me know. He says, come back and let me know what it does. You know, and I says, oh, help me. I said, help you. I said, yeah. He goes, it's still the same corner. It's still the same turn. That he goes, so if he goes, I'm kind of fighting to say that, you know, and then I'm standing there talking. To, <laughs> and it gets even better. I'm standing there talking to Charlie, and Troyer walks up, right? Of course, I know Maynard from Freddie buying the race cars and all that. Mm-hmm. And you know, what's my nickname? Uh, the Thriller. No, Carl Miller. Well, yeah. Maynard. Call Maynard Miller. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, which got hung on to me by Paul McElerney and their crew. Why did they call you Maynard? My street stock days, first year, we go to West Westboro Speedway. Go up there, big street stock race. High Paul, bank, hold in mind. Oh, yeah. Fast yeah. place. I always said Westboro, to me, was a mini, uh, um, a, a wall stadium riverhead cross. Mm-hmm. Is exactly what I mean. It was about the size of Riverhead, that, but and it was uh, it was. I had yeah, been there was, once was, before it, they tore it, it down. It was an awesome mm-hmm. racetrack. So McElhern, he's like, "Come on, Carl, let's go up to, you know, West." So all right, we go up there. So we're trying to figure out, and the big thing was Leaf Springs. Would you run for Leaf Springs? So this was '79, and we had just started racing with Troyer. So we had our first Troyer car, and Leaf Springs were in the cars then. So me trying to figure out setups and this and that, I went and I measured the leaf springs in Freddie's car and I copied him in the Mustang, right? And the only difference was modified leaf springs were mounted in the center, right? Mustang was just off by an inch. It was off center by an inch, whether it was back or whatever. So I even asked Troy, I said, well, how, what can I do to kind of copy? He goes, well, just measure the distance from the eyes from the outside and keep the progressions the same. So no matter, so I was like, okay. I said, well, and this is when I first had the street stock. So like, how many springs, you know, so uh, we were, it used to be seven leaf springs, six leaf springs, you know, da 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I, like I said, I ran those four races, ran really good it, with the with the car. All right, Paul, that's when Paul became Paul. Paul oh, yeah. Do you have a he picture was, of that street stock anywhere in this pile? or uh, no. this. You know, that's in the other fifth album that's it, outside, which it's a shame I should have brought it in. Uh, okay. with the, yeah, I, I didn't even think of that. That would have been uh, cool to see. Oh, yeah, I have a picture of me and him together this way. <laughs> and then literally the next lap we were like this. Well, let's you know, take a look. A, let's take a look at some of these older yeah, pictures. Yeah. Like, this one you were showing me earlier. Yeah. This was Dover. modifieds at Dover. right? Dover, 1969. That's Freddie outside pole. Um, Ray Hendricks on the pole. There's Charlie Jazan back. And then the car right there is Cliffy Tyler, another Long Island ice right, guys. Right. Loved it. Lo- loved that track. Freddie went and tested. So you saw modifieds run at Dover. My dad flagged the first modified race there at Dover yeah, in 1969. How fast were they going? They must have been 124 miles an hour average speed, 1969. Which is, which is fast for them. And then, Aver- But you say that's 124 average, 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 which means they're doing 134 at probably their fastest down, point. Yeah, probably yeah. down the straightaway. Right, stuff. right. And see, Freddie went there and tested for good for far, good year. Firestone. Mm-hmm. He was the first one to ever turn a lap there. He went there with Mario Andrade, Lloyd Ruby, and John Han- uh, <laughs> Gordon Johncock and tested for Firestone. So they went back, so they were fat. It's a, that's his coach, straight axle, 427 Chevy injected. Right? Wow. Well, Ray's on the pole. He shows up the next day, never turned a lap there, ever. Hendrick. In his coupe. Ray, Ray Hendrick. Hendrick. Yeah. In his coupe, 327 small block carburetor and puts it on the pole. And he won the race. He won the first three races there, right? Wow. In that car. But Freddie won. So my dad flagged the race there. So that was that was just awesome. I these mean, that are was, some incredible. And like I said, I, here I'm, you know, 13 years old. So I got to go to these racetracks, you know. I would just, just awesome. love to see pictures uh, of, or I should say video, of Modifieds at Dover. Could you yeah. imagine Modifieds at Dover now? Yeah, I mean, was, we saw them at was, Bristol yeah. and saw how blindingly fast they yeah. were there. And yeah. then... 
Here we go. Let's <laughs> let's throw it back a little bit. Yeah, Is that you? Yeah, that's you me, and your dad. Me and dad in front of the house. Wow. Okay. And that was calm then. I mean, that was just white pants, red. Th- I mean, my dad had some outfits. I mean, because you know it was just we got into the seventy, late 60s, 70s. But I mean, my dad was you know. Now was, was this was during calm. the era of the Winston sponsorship of? No, this is tracks? before. This is this is this is probably nineteen sixty eight. The, this the first year, yeah, you know, first year my dad flagged at Iceland. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then here's your mom like still, yeah. with Renee Charland, right? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. Put some of these down, yeah. and then put yeah, this one up. For those that are listening, unfortunately, you're gonna have to go watch the show on YouTube or Racing America to see some of these uh, these great photos. Um, this is what your mom with mom, Renee yep. Charland, and it's yep. a bumper sticker. And <laughs> I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it says, "Teach the world love." Fuck someone today. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rainy was pretty bad. And your but, mom but found my that? mom yeah, my mom knew what Rainy was like and uh she found that bumper sticker and gave it to her. Uh, gave it to me. This is the all star three hundred at Ice Slope. That's know? funny. And she's giving she, the thumbs yeah, up. Right, she's yeah, like, she's right. got that smart smart oh, ass yeah. cheese and grin in the photo. Yeah, she ran the back <laughs> eight, man. She she was she was tough and it, but she had fun. She loved like she said, she loved screwing with Rainy, like stuff like that, you know. I is mean, that how uh you you built up a relationship with these guys because yeah. they got to know her from working at all these racetracks exactly. and events and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. they. I, so your you know, dad was flagging. Yeah. She was working the ticket. Working booths. the back eight. She worked Trenton. You know, we used to go to Trenton. My dad worked Trenton. Mm-hmm. You know, flag. Ray Sullivan flagged that my dad was the back, you know, assistant flag man or whatever it was right. at Trenton on the mile and a half. That was. Oh, that's that a, was a, that that's was a great photo. Great place. And then, and then uh, let's, let's, my see, mom let's move Richie. this one up a little bit it, higher. I have a, let's put this up here. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Hold on. And that's this Richie and your mom partying. Yep, yep. And that's Richie and your mom yep, partying too. Yep. Which was <laughs> that's one of my favorite pictures of Richie. That's just a great picture of Richie and my mom. Just uh, uh after know, the just, race at the yeah, it's Butch Masika. That's a Butch Masika's truck. Oh, it is. Because okay. Butch, Butch used to sell the tires and gas and all of that at the time, right? And he was parked right next to us, Freddie, at the time. Okay. So, okay. uh, but yeah, she, uh, you know, and that, that's like I said, that's how I got to know all these guys because that and then the All Star Racing League being at Islip mm-hmm. in those years, the All Star Racing League started in 1967. So my dad worked in '68. So Bob O'Rourke ran it, right? Mm-hmm. And was and then the All Star Racing League, which pitted four dirt track drivers, right. you know, team drivers mm-hmm. against four track asphalt track guys. Mm-hmm. So there was two guys from each track. That were right. guaranteed in each of these shows, and then there was a third guy that was like the alternate that, that he was allowed to go there and qualify if he could or whatever. And then you raced against the locals, and you went, like I said, it was a whole all star racing league. It was the greatest thing ever. I remember it because you'd they, see guys like uh, Lou Lazaro yeah, show up yeah. or Al Tasnati, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. dirt track guys, Kegel, Buzzy right. Rudiman, you know. Um, like I said, I ran the, when I ran the Buzzy room years later, spotting and driving a motor coach when D- David was racing. And I'd run into Buzzy and I'd go, hey, Buzzy, I say I'm Carl Millis and my dad was Dutch. Oh, my God. Yeah. That, you know, and then we'd start talking ice up stories, all stall. And he goes, yeah. And then she said, he goes, your mom used to run the back eight and stuff like that and work. So that's, you know, like He's I said. He's still they, winning. Yes. He's still winning races, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> right? He's is great. He? He's he over fabulous. 80 years old, yeah, and he's still like racing modifieds, and he's yes. still winning. Still winning races. God bless him. Yes. All right, now which yes. picture is this? This does not look like it's at a track. This looks no. like you're at a party somewhere. Yeah. Um, I don't know where it was. Probably, it might have been more like uh, probably O'Rourke's, because okay. they all used to go to O'Rourke's like <laughs> All-Star Race League. They used to race on Tuesdays and Wednesdays right. during the week, or Wednesdays and Thursdays. So what would happen is, like, say they went and ran Wall Stadium Wednesday, mm-hmm. and I slip was going to be Thursday, right? Well, the whole group went back to a Rocks Bar and Grill after the race at Wall Stadium. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, till just to go party till dawn. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's probably hanging out at a Rocks there, you know, just that's great, just doing whatever. And so. what do we got? This looks like uh, this looks like. Charlie Jazombak yeah. and oh, is that your thing. dad? Yeah, and Don Campy. Okay, now he that's Campy a, promoted uh, Freeport. Freeport, Freeport Speedway, okay. and that's at Freeport or is yep, that that's a, at Freeport? Yeah. That's at Freeport. Yeah, he won whatever you know. I'm not sure whatever race he won, but that's my dad. I mean, he probably I whatever happened, you know, my father said something funny, guaranteed, you know, and then Campy was right there. And I'm curious. It looks like he's holding a piece of paper in his hand. And I wouldn't be surprised, and I, and I wish I still knew anybody that still had them, but my dad had a habit of whoever won the feature, 
that night. He would take the starting lineup and circle that driver's name, and my dad would sign it and date it and give it to him. Oh, that's after cool. After he won the race, so I w- I'm wondering if that's what, what he had in his hand and stuff like that. You but know, it's so funny, though. And then here's, uh, of yeah, course, would, Charlie yeah. Jazan back yeah. Mike, with, uh, yeah, yeah, slide yep, that down. Yep. And then, of course, that. there's Charlie mm-hmm. Jazan back yep. uh, in the, at the at coupe. Islip, yep. Now, that's old Islip because yep. there's no concrete wall. That's Arco yep. Barrier that's there. That's 1971, I think it says. Yep, July 3rd, 1971. You, you know what I think is so cool about this, too, is that you've got little articles that you were showing me mm-hmm. as well and, and pictures and, and notes from the promoter of Ice of Speedway right. to your father. Like, you're not going to find this stuff online. Right. It, you know, like, this is... This right. is this is the internet before it was the internet. Yeah. You know, this is media before yeah. it was. You know, that's, con- right. this is media before it was content creation. Right. You know, and that's that's what Ice Up Speedway was. There was something special about that place. I mean, everybody had their Saturday night racetracks that they, you know. And, and that's what I, I get a kick out of when I look at stuff, when we post stuff on Facebook, when we post that up and the stories come up. And especially if I post stuff with my dad, I love the comments. of like, oh, he was a colorful, he was the man, he was the show, you know. But but people then you'd start telling stories like this. And everybody to a man is like, I said, was home. You know, you had that. I mean, to me, when I started a kid, when we first started working there in 68, Saturday morning was horrible, horrible. It was like Christmas morning. <laughs> you had that. It was. It was like, oh nerves. my god! Friday night, you couldn't sleep. Right. You were so excited about. It. And there's people that say that that they'll say the same thing. That yeah, I used to have that. Was I had that? Was that same oh, my, feeling? My mother and father yeah. used to yell at my brother and yeah. I because Saturdays before we would go to Islip, take my, a nap. Exactly. You had to take a my, nap. Had my me, old man me, and my mother yes, would make us lay yes, down and take a nap for a couple hours. Two o'clock in the afternoon. So we wouldn't oh, be falling asleep. Worst. So we wouldn't worst. fall asleep. And then yep. you're just laying in bed, like just staring yep. at the ceiling, thinking about race cars. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Tommy Baldwin tells the same story. We, you know, because we get talking about stuff like that. And yeah. he mentioned that one day. He was saying, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, my mom used to make me take a nap before." Take a yeah, nap. Yes, I go mm-hmm. to take a nap. Are you crazy? You're so jacked up, right? That you, you know, you, there's no. Way. And like I said, Friday night was like sometimes. We fell asleep. Sometimes yeah, because when well, we're gonna be up late, you know, it's like, yeah. especially us idiots. Because I mean, we never got home before yep. the before the dawn. I remember my and mother it, used to make fried chicken all the time because right. it was quick and easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you right. put it right in the yep. uh, put it right in the bag, yep. and then you know it was done. You just chuck it under the grass there. And, and everybody <laughs> had their habit, and then everybody had their section. Yes, at the racetrack. Yeah, you know, and once it got established. You know, you know, everybody went put their blanket, but it was, you know, the Jazambak sat in one place, the Ferrante sat in another place, mm-hmm. you know, and then you had the <laughs> the turn three and four gang that just because no grandstands, they just stood there and they were those ones that had the beers. And, Todd Bodine and, uh, was in here the other day and he brought it up in the best way. He was no, it wasn't Todd. I'm sorry, it was Kevin Hughes. He was here. He, okay, he right. Brought it yep, up the other day. Yep. He said, you know, guys like. Jason Myers works at UPS Monday right. through Friday. I, like someone like right. you or, or Freddie, you work in a body shop Monday through Friday, but Saturday night comes and you're a celebrity for that one night. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, you're, yeah, exactly. you've got lines of people wanting your autograph yes. and, 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 you know, just signing people's checkered flags or, or yeah. whatever they had. Yeah. If they had yeah. autograph books back then or their pictures, yeah. they, the tracks had photo stands. Yeah. Tracks don't have photo yeah. stands yeah. anymore. I know. Oh, I always said, I go putting that fire shit on. That was a Superman suit, man. Mm-hmm. You, you put it, you, you were, it was different. You know, the place I worked, I worked for Teddy Wisnowski in the import business. A couple of girls that we knew that didn't get talking and Teddy wasn't too hopped to me running it's in the modified then at the time because he'd retired and you know how those guys like that that when they retired and got out they didn't want to hear it about it anymore because yeah. they it was hey, I mean Teddy was badass I mean Teddy was badass <laughs> Freddie told me Freddie Har- pictures of Teddy Freddie, uh, here. Over here. Um, Freddie Harback told me that if he put a hundred percent effort into racing as he did into the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. He could have been as good as Richie Evans. Uh-huh. I mean, that's and then Richie. Richie took him. 
Teddy went and spent a year. First off, hold on. Look at this old photo album. That's what I dig about this. I mean, oh my God, look at this. Me and Teddy Okay, Wisnowski. there's you and Teddy Wisnowski. Yeah. And that's with your race car or his? No, it's with him. The late mo- When he's running late models at Freeport. The okay. Dominating everybody. Look at you. How old were you in this picture? Um, probably 20... Yeah, 19. Yes, because I, I started working with Freddie in 76 race and said I was 20. So I was flagging a Freeport. I was 19 years old. I, I was just, I was the assistant, but Where, um, I was – I was, I was, here's, here's a great Who did you have to wrestle for that championship belt you're wearing there? <laughs> What? The, the belt just, that's, that's, a just, huge, that's just, huge well that's, that was the thing though <laughs> though the pants are let me see the, the pants shoes the pants yeah right white the shoes pleated. the pants are blue yeah. the shirt is is red white and blue right. and the belt is white the shirt's opened almost to uh, the middle of your chest yeah, yeah, too. Right. well it's 75 <laughs> this man is great. that's, that's this 75 is, this is great stuff yeah there's okay. big bob o'rourke oh yeah. uh, yes yeah i worked for him for a couple of seasons out of riverhead raceway on the track crew but uh, yeah, there's Teddy Wasnowski. Now that was the coach, right? The coach yep. body. Uh, that was modified. the Billy, the Billy Hour car. Okay. That car was beautiful. That was that sedan. Was and your dad. Beautiful, my dad. Okay, yeah. and everyone and, has, and, it, and that's what put Teddy got to work with Billy Hour and all of them, and he started running. And see, now Teddy used to do demolition derbies. Too. Wait, a little no fire suits. No, that was it, right? Yeah. You know? And this is seventy, or uh, my mother didn't have a date on the back, but that's probably be seventy. Seventy or seventy-one, maybe. With, with and no uh, fire yeah, suits, right. yeah, no what, protection. Yeah, red and white. It was a red and white with the polo shirts. They called them or something like that. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, but see, you know, Teddy started. <laughs> right. Teddy used to do demolition derbies. Mm-hmm. Right. Now you know who Don McTavish was, right? Oh yeah, he yeah. Was, he eventually went on to race in NASCAR. He just killed the Daytona. Right. right. Yeah. But he was. He was. I mean, people talk, they can't even talk about Teddy, about Don McTavish without starting to cry. That's how badass he was, right? Mm -hmm. Well, his, he used to do demolition derbies too. He was the world, he was the 1962 world champion demolition derby champion (laughs) at Islip Speedway. He used to be at Islip Speedway. And it was televised at ABC, Wide World of Sports. They did the figure eight race. They did the world figure eight championship and then the world demolition derby. Well, in 62, he won the championship, right? Well, Teddy and Donnie Mack, were good friends, mm-hmm. and both bad. <laughs> a lot of <laughs> love the women. Let's put it that way, right? Very, oh, right. So, but they were good friends. So he Teddy was a did. Ladies' man. Yes. Okay. Teddy did demolition derbies too, mm-hmm. right? So, for, and then he go, and then knowing Teddy and working for him, and this and that, there was they cheated so bad. I mean, the guys that did real good, you know, concrete, fill the quarter panels up with concrete, like you got station wagons. So you used to cut the. You know, because you had the inner panel and the outer panel. Mm-hmm. Well, you used to cut the top of it and fill the quarter panels up with cement. Cement? Oh, yeah. In the body? Uh, it, yeah, exactly. I thought you want to lighten the car up, not make no, it heavier. No, you don't want to wreck it. You don't want it to, you want it, you want it when you hit somebody else to destroy their car. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You put truck tires, truck tires on the car because they were like 16 ply or whatever it was. Right, right. right. They used to take take the fan off. And so if you did get hit, the fan didn't go through the rail. No, there was all kinds of tricks like that. Right, so right, okay. he learned them from Donnie Mac. Right? I, I saw some guys actually weld um, rocker arms over the valve stems. Mm-hmm. That was like, that would keep the valve stems from breaking off or, or shearing. Yeah, right. There was all kinds of, so he knew, so, so what Freddie said, so he would, Teddy would run modifieds and would do good. This, but he'd go do demolition derby. And that was just the same thing, late 60s, you know, mid 60s. Well, the demolition derby would pay $1,000 to win. So Freddie said, he goes, Teddy, go win the, the demolition derby. He goes, we wouldn't see him for a month. <laughs> he goes, then he'd come out of party and whatever. Yeah. And right. then he'd run out of money, come back, and he had a nursery. Then he was, Teddy was, he used to carry railroad ties really? in either either arm like this. I was like going to say, he looks, he was, looks pretty big. Look at his oh, yeah. Look yeah, at yeah, oh, yeah. On he had arms on him. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know what? You had yeah. to back in the day because yeah. you had no power no steering power in those right. things. Fuel injected, straight axle, no power steering. How right. the, it, it just yeah. amazes me when those things got sideways or got away from you, how they hung on to well, them. I, because I, I ran a Pro 4 for a little while without power steering. Right. And it's, it's once she starts to get, you know, do those tank slappers, man, yeah. it, it'll, it'll break your wrist. It, well, it was the first year I drove, second year I went, Second, third year when I went to Stafford, right, with the modified first time, right. I've been there, been to racing, and that's funny. Now I'd gone to Thompson for my first race ever, 
wrecked it, but we're running good. But anyway, so now I had a little bit more comfortable, really got, was comfortable with the car. With I the went, modified. I, you're right, with the modified. Okay. And I went to Stafford, and Stafford's tough, man. Tough. But I like to slide up in turn one and two, you know, and I'm like, and it was hard. And, I'm like, and I came back, and I told Freddie, I said, you know what, I thought you guys were good. You guys were freaking Superman. How you drove those tanks with tires as hard as concrete, mm -hmm. big block injected, right? no straight axle, no power steering. They went down the straightaway like rockets, and they didn't go through the corners. No, I said... No. I said, you guys, I said, you guys are even more my heroes than I ever thought. Well, I was watching That's some old footage, and they would take a bus steering wheel because it was so yeah. huge, right. you know, so they could get a, yeah. a big Well, Freddie board. told me that was one, he always had a big steering wheel, and he said it was easy to, you had to turn less, mm -hmm. and it was easier to turn. Mm -hmm. So it's a small steering wheel, you got to go like this, bigger steering wheel, you like this, and it slows the steering down. And all right. Speaking all of Freddie, of yeah. yeah. Speaking of Freddie, let's yeah. take a look at another picture here we got. Uh, let's take these down. Yeah. yeah. And we got now. This looks like the front stretch at Islip back yep. in the day, yep. and that is uh, one of the old coupe modifieds, right? Yep. Just look Make at it. look at the crowd. I mean, yes. the place yes. is packed. People are dressed to the nines yes. in suits and stuff yep. too. I mean, just 19, look at the era. That's 1969. 1969. But it was like that every Saturday night. I God. mean, every Saturday night there was not there was it was like that all the time. And that's Freddie and, in Butch Masika's car, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. In the car that that, that uh, Alex you, Kitson has today that he still takes around. And you brought a shirt or something, yep. right? Is it over there? Let's Where's let's see what you I brought. You had it. I oh, gave, is it in the other room? I gave it to you. Yeah, you probably put oh. it in the other room. All right. All right. Um, Hang on. So yeah, which is that's <coughs> sorry. That's a shirt that they that uh, Alex and M wear, and, it, and it's from that that day that night when he won. That's the All Star Racing League race at Islip. That's the All-Star Racing Yeah, that's the All-Star. Okay. Yeah. If you look close, he's about to run my old man that's over. That's so. And then now here's another side. Look at the stripes yeah. and, and the stars oh, on his, on his pants. Go. And yeah. uh, Chris just came in here and tossed the shirt in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, so look, yeah that's from that. This one that Carl brought me, which I think is awesome and badass. Yep, yeah, there you go. That is uh, the same as the picture that's there. Yeah. And then on the back, it's got, yeah. you know, the... Uh, the number Butch Masika. It was called the Hot Little hot, Butch's Hot Masika's Hot Little Number. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And God. then now you can't see well in that picture, but then my old man tells told me the story later on. He goes, "He gets all done now after he's done like that." He goes, "I go over to get the checkered flag from Freddie. He hands me the steering wheel. Steering wheels didn't come off the cars back then. Uh -huh. They had a Corvette steering wheel, right? A white Corvette steering wheel." Which is just the three spokes, mm -hmm. and I thought you know, and the steering wheels from a sixty-something Corvette, whatever, and it, just the three rims, and they're metal rims, and they're sharp. Well, what happened was the plastic ring broke off the steering wheel on lap ten, and Freddie drove the rest of the race on the, the spokes on the spokes, <laughs> and he says his hands were all just gouged up and sore and brutal and he goes that's not eh. this race yeah no right? that's that race well, he can't, but the wheels right there yeah well but it was on there but he like <laughs> he it was about to, it was about to break and that's off. what happened he broke it off and handed it to my old man he goes yeah wow like this. yeah tony contarino talks about that same thing he goes because i'm like sometimes you know you kind of remember in my did that did really and then tony Con he goes oh yeah he goes yeah you handed your old man the steering wheel he goes yeah it broke right off God. on lap 10 and, and he drove it the rest of the way. Same thing. Straight axle, no power steering. And this is also the era when going and buying a chassis was no, right, unheard of. You right. had to you build, build your, build your own, own stuff. Right, right. Like everybody had to build their own stuff, which yeah. I thought was great. I mean, I yeah. was just at the end of that era. Right. So for me, I thought it was cool because you knew who could build a really nice car. And right. then you knew who built pieces of crap yep, and exactly. you, when you heard about somebody putting a new car together you were excited to see what they were going to build because you knew that they were nothing an was amazing the same. fabricator everybody had their own even if it was the same car it wasn't the same mm -hmm. you know when, when they started with the pintos well there was no tim pintos that were the same we couldn't even build two pintos identical you know they look pretty close but they just oh you put the body on a little bit different the next time or you know just something different and like i said i was fortunate enough again in 76 that's when I started working for Freddie, you mm -hmm. know, on the cars and all of that. And we built that car, that Scout chassis car in 76, and that's the year he won. We won four championships that year, finished second in the nation to Jerry Cook, won 24 races, 
you know, uh, that car. Well, two cars. Yeah, but that was the that car here. Uh, it's in the other book. It's in the other book. I had so many pictures, I didn't know what to bring in. You know, uh, I was saying it's right. like, um, but yeah, that you know. So I was fortunate to, to get to do stuff like that. You know, it was, uh, it was, and it was fun. Like I said, we built that was a winter project. You know, I remember laying. We built that car, and we brought in two Scout chassis, mm -hmm. and laid them on the ground. And then cut them up, and then measured, and then started building a hoop, and you know, and did this to try this, tried that. You know, it, it wasn't easy. You know, it was a lot. Just, yeah, it was just, a lot of it was trial and error of what worked Ted, and what didn't. Right? Back to Teddy Wisnowski when he drove for Billy Hour, in '74 or '5, he had these two identical black Pintos, beautiful. One became Wayne Anderson's car. One became Tommy McCann's car later on, but they were. Two identical cars. I mean, identical. And and Teddy said, and then they built that car because the year before he had spent the summer with Richie, and became and learned a lot because Richie kind of took him under his wing and this and that. And he came back and built these two cars the next year and did really well at Iceland. Won the championship at Iceland. But so these two driving. Well, no, it was Billy Al. It was Billy Al's cars, the black sixteens. Okay. And then Teddy was driving. Okay. And like I said, they built these two cars identical, right? And uh, we're at Freeport racing with, you know, Cousin Freddie and Teddy. They, you know, they grew up, you know. Teddy was another one of Freddie Harback's protégés mm -hmm. from day one. And they're at Freeport racing in practice because we used to race Freeport Friday nights, ice up Saturday nights. And uh, it goes over. Teddy goes, what the hell are you doing running the ice up car here at Freeport? Teddy's like, what are you talking about? He goes, what are you running the ice up car here for? He goes, how the hell do you know? He goes, because it's a quarter of an inch lower than the other car. And Teddy's like, there's no, he goes, he goes, it is. How do, he goes, because I followed that car, the Islip car, for a year and a half. He goes, I know that car. He goes, so he tell, but two identical cars, mm -hmm. and one ran really well at Islip, didn't run at Freeport. Mm -hmm. And the other one ran really good at Freeport and didn't run good at Islip. And then Teddy said, he goes, we built both these cars side by side. He goes, we've never built two more identical cars in our lives. The gussets, we made a gusset for one car, we made it for the other. And he goes, they're two totally different race cars. Wow. Totally it, different. It's just, I know, it's, it's amazing and it, how that And that's works what was out. great about, you know, and it was because you hear guys talk about. It's enough, and yeah. it's also enough to frustrate the shit out right. of you too. Well, you had, you know, that's why guys had cars back then that they ran for three years. Because that... It worked. And we built two more other cars in between. You know, Richie had the same. I mean, Richie used to run two, three cars, but he had one. Right. Same thing. That ran just... Or ran so good at a certain racetrack kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, just the way they were. You know, it was like... I know that he, Richie talked about when he first went to the coilover car, he didn't never liked it because we ran torsion bars. We always had torsion bar cars back then. Okay. So his first coilover car, didn't like it. Tried it here, tried it there. That are just torsion bars in the front end, right? in the front, okay. right? Yeah. And then we leave springs in the, back, in the right? back, and we still had leaf springs, but they were starting to go to coils in the front, and he just didn't like it for some reason. And something happened. He went to Stafford and had to run the car. He couldn't run the other car, right? And that was it. It was like you flipped the light switch. Wow, this car was just, and then that became, and then went from there, you know. And then mm -hmm. so you started, but that's the way it was. That's the way it was with those cars you built. You know, no two were the same, even though they tried to be the same. Right. You know. Let's so, check out some more of these pictures. Now, okay. this is your dad, right? Yeah. This is him yep. flagging these. We yep. got some three yep. photos. Actually, if you can yep. clip that yep. on there and get yep. that up a little higher. Yep. Yeah. That is, first off, the one that you're putting up there. That looks so dangerous. <laughs> well, I mean, he's got a full, that yep. must be what? That, that's got to be 25, 30 cars yep. heading for him? That's the, that's the, that's the figure eight championship race <laughs> at Iceland. Now, wait a minute. It gets better. And then now... When you would talk to when Tommy Baldwin, right, growing up, and you talk to Park, and this one, that, and guys, we'd start talking about my dad. And the first thing they say, he goes, I remember your old man, he goes, used to figure, fill, fag them figure eight races. He goes, he would run down to the X mm -hmm. and jump up and wave the green flag right. and run backwards, not turn around, backpedal. Mm hmm. Well, that's what he would do. They, the first race here, they would make him do the oval. But after that, for some reason, they would do the figure eight. Right. And then that's what my old man do. He would run, and then what he would do, he would start, say, here. And each restart, he'd get further down and further down and further down, where later on they used to do all the heat races. Mm -hmm. 
because it was a show. Uh, Bruce, Dol- but, Bruce Noel took over doing that for yeah. many he, he years. Turns and, around and runs. Yeah, but you know what? Do, yeah, right. they got they've gotten right. a lot faster since right. then, and and I t- it's but still not. But yeah, it, I would still want to protect my own ass. I don't care. The, the guys like that, Bruce Noel, Ray Morgiano, right. your father, right. that would actually run for onto sure. the track right. and then oh. run off backwards, oh. waving the flag at, as the cars are coming at you. That it just takes huge balls. Well, at Freeport Speedway, he used to stand in the infield and throw the green flag mm-hmm. and then run across the track after the that field I've went seen. by. Right. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of guys who used to do that. But there was one even crazier than all of them was Tex Enright. You ever hear of Tex Enright? Oh, yeah. He used to flag at Middletown of Flemington. He'd stand on they, the... They used to call him the... Cra- nah, I don't know. He can't... He was... He was crazy. Come out in, a big Indian Well, headdress. he was an Indian, right. Well, right. He, and then... But he just... He used to split the field and throw the green flag down on... And got hit. Right. And and in fact, they said one time my dad told I said well, Flemington or East Windsor, somebody got in clean out the flag stand with him in it. Right, mm. gets out. So what are they going to do? He took a fifty-five gallon drum and turned it upside down and put it down in the infield and flagged the rest of the races from there. And he said he got knocked off it twice during during. That's what my father told like, me. My father told me yeah. that yeah, Tex Enright was he would come running out on the track in yeah. an Indian headdress. Yeah. They'd put a 55 gallon drum in the middle of the front stretch. Right. So, right. And cut. then he would stand on yeah, that stand and on. wave. Yeah. That was another one he both did. Both green yeah. flags yeah. as both rows would. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know how oh, fucking sure. crazy yeah. that is. Yeah. It was part that, of the show. That is crazy. And, and doing that weekly. Yeah. Weekly as your f- hobby. You yes, know, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was, you know, you're getting paid, well, like 50 bucks a night is what he used to get paid. Man. This one here. The, the bottom if you, left. If, if you look, it's hard to look, but my dad used to stand right on top of the guardrail. So this was the first year they put the new guardrail up. You can see daylight under the guardrail. Yeah, it's well, amazing parts didn't come flying underneath yeah, yeah. into the crowd. <laughs> well, they did. We used to get hit by rubber if you sat right there. That rubber and stuff chunks like that. I've been hit by. But, but, oh, yeah, there was times that stuff went through. But So he's standing there, and my dad wanted to get closer. So you see he's standing on top of the guardrail. And then he was standing between the fence and the, on top of and the guardrail was only you know three inches wide yeah, I can see and then it. the rebar so he was using the rebar so he had the track maintenance guy go weld the plate on top of it the following week so he could stand on top of the and that's how he flagged the race wow. well what do you if you look close it's hard to see with the picture there but he used to his foot would stick over the edge I can see it of the wall I can see it right, right. there so right. he's standing out practice one day and feels this nudge and kicks his foot out it's like, what the hell? He goes by, and then Freddie Harback goes by, and Butch's blue 18. Comes by the next lap, laughing his ass off, right? They get done with practice, and my old man looks at the tip of his sneakers, blue paint on it. From he, Freddie's car. Yes. He winged my father's sneaker, never touched the guardrail. Wow. Because my father's foot was probably standing six inches over the thing. So he goes in after practice. This is like the practice day. You know how they had. So he had so-and-so, probably Ray should go flag the... You know, figure right thing. He went in and talked to Freddie, right? And he goes walking up. He goes, "You crazy Dutch son of a bitch!" Right? <laughs> and he goes, "What?" You know? He goes, "What?" And he's laughing. At, and it, we're parked next to Charlie. Oh, he's parked. We um, automatic Freddie Harback um, Association, but Freddie's parked next to Charlie in the pits. So my old man, and he's laughing. And they're both laughing. He goes, "So Charlie's like, what? What the hell's so funny?" He goes, "He goes, look at the tip of Freddie's uh, Dutch's sneakers." And he goes, "There's blue paint on." He goes, "I winged him, but not the fence." And he goes, I'll give you five bucks if you can do it again. And Charlie goes, I want a piece of that. <laughs> it became a big game between the rest of them, between the two of them each week, who could get my father's sneaker and not clip the fence. My God. <laughs> but it's just, you know, and then my dad would egg him on. He'd be standing there like this, and he'd put his foot out and go, and he kept, he would move it back further and further and see how far back he'd get his foot. And they would could clip the toe of his sneaker and not hit the wall. You guys were the Wild West back oh, yeah. then. I'm and it, you, and it, it, really, it, it gets that's better. Crazy. They go to Dover for the very first race ever at Dover, right? Yeah. 1960 on my dad's flagging. So he's up in the flag stand and it's way up and it's one of these things and it's high up. And then, and then the flag stand was on what's now the back stretch at Dover. Mm-hmm. It was, and then he hated it because they had the totally enclosed air conditioned grandstands there. For so the horse he, track. For the horse track. Mm-hmm. That was part of the, 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 allure of the thing but my dad hated it because he had no audience no crowd to feed off it was quiet so anyway first practice comes out and here comes freddie right <laughs> comes blowing by my old man sticks his leg down between the guardrail i mean between the the, 
the you know the railing mm-hmm. right and points to Freddie and goes like this and waves him on and he points down to his sneaker like this <laughs> and Freddie goes by like this he goes no way so he does the same thing with Charlie he Charlie comes by the next lap and sticks <laughs> so puts them off he goes no. he goes if I get your foot here he goes it ain't gonna be good you know oh, <laughs> so God. but that's what they did they you know it was they, they had fun doing stuff like that it I mean, was that crazy was, you yeah. know like I said I slip, it was it was part of the you know. Part of the show was... It was part of the way of life, well, it, right? right? Well, and Sonny Granger, who was the announcer there, mm-hmm. right? Now, there was no radios back then, no radio communication, because, so the flag man ran the show. Mm-hmm. Once you get on the racetrack, that was, you were in control, you know, and stuff. So, and Sonny was a great announcer, but he knew nothing about race cars, at all, cars at all. I mean, he was a liquor salesman. But he was a, with a carnival show barker. He knew how to keep the show going. He's the one that actually kind of, well... Charging Charlie, that was kind of easy. Everybody called, but he used to call Charlie "Good Time Charlie" because mm-hmm. that the, the Zomback family asked him to kind of back off on that one because it was you know a little too much, you know. But he said, "Hey, Good Time Charlie," you know, because they knew what was going on. But he knew how to keep the show going. So my dad, being a cop in New York City, you know, when you worked at jobs like that, you were privy to some really good jokes. You know, yeah, good one, bad one, but right. So dirty, that's a, dirty humor. Uh, well, but 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 good stuff. I mean, there was always good jokes going right. around. And my dad would feed Sonny Joe. He would each week. He would like if he hear a good joke, he would tell him. So that's what, on the radio. You know, between the break and again, hey Dutch, did you hear about the two guys that went? You know, and my dad would like, hey, and the people would, and the, and that was the show. The people fed off of it, and they they knew it. You know, right. they got, you know, like I said, it's I see those comments that people well, he, say, you know, he was the show. I mean, that's how you kept the show going. You know, well, was, also what they didn't have too was a full crowd of people with their faces in their cell phones. Yeah, right, also exactly. Also looking right. at the, uh, yeah. at, at uh, you know, uh, at a lighted up screen. Yeah. All right, now these Let's two pictures this. we're gonna put up here. Yeah. This is put. It, Put him up here in just a second. Now this is Trenton, right? Yep. And uh, hold on, we'll put one, one on this side. He'll put one on the other side. And take a look at this. Now. <laughs> this is scary looking. Actually, it looks like a bomb went off at the racetrack. Yep. But you know what? Here's the funny thing. I was at Trenton just a couple of times in in my yep. life as a child, and I remember this picture you mm-hmm. know of seeing them coming down the front stretch at you that's pit road right mm-hmm. there yeah and not even on the racetrack no that no one, that's what that I mean. one right and this standing is the in track, the pits right. of my father's midget yeah, over yeah. here i mean the cars, trenton yeah. was a badass race track, a mile and a half i mean but you could see this this is a mess this is the sunday before the very first race of champions in 1972 at trenton there was an allman brothers concert saturday night before the week before the race and we go in there because when working the racetrack we used to go there on sunday to get all so because wednesdays they started signing in and all that and then inspection started early third i mean they used to start at midnight they used to sign in at midnight wednesday into thursday morning basically and then start a hundred and something cars you know, so they would start inspection at midnight. And they would start like 50 and, of them, right? Yeah, 55. Well, then it was like 60, actually. Wow. It was 16 and 55, 50, whatever. Um, so we'd go in there Sunday morning. You know, we'd all go down because the parents, you know, they, they'd all get together. Yeah, have meet, but it was a big social hour. And, and they were horrified. And they walked in and see. I remember we walked in. A rock was already there. Joe Gerber, and he goes, "Yeah, go take a look outside." And we were like, "Holy crap!" So they're like, "What the hell are they gonna do?" So, I think that's where it started. But they got a hold of the local Boy Scout chapters around there and donated money to them, and they had them come in and, and clean the racetrack. And they they cleaned it up by Monday afternoon. Went around picking up all the garbage and stuff like that. But yeah, they were like they were freaking out. They didn't know what what the hell they got. And the grandstands looked just if not worse. Mm-hmm. You know, and my, my mother laughed. He goes, like, the big pile you see right here, well, that's the garbage can. And there's nothing. He goes, she goes, all the garbage was around the garbage can. Right, right. Oh, what's it in the garbage just a can? pile. It was just, you know. Oh, my it, God. It, now, did you ever get a, to race at Trenton? No, but I have a better story than that. Okay. The following year, right? So this is 72, so 73. So now I've already learned his permit, da-da-da-da, right? So same thing with S Sunday. So we get in there, we're like, all right, how's the track? No, the track's good this time. There was no concert the day before, right? So, and I'm I'm the only kid there. They were all adults, you know. So, um, like I said, so they would get in for their meeting. And then now they were in the, what was like the pay the clubhouse. It was like the payoff window, the front ticket booth there was the main area mm-hmm. at Trenton, right? Because it was great. It was like a fairgrounds. It was, it was awesome, right? 
So they were all in there hanging out. And cocktails are flowing, and they're having a good time. So I'm like, can I go for a ride? Can I take the car and then go ride around the thing? I'm 16. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Right? I go, you sure? No, 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 no. We didn't get there yet. So I'm like, I just, yeah, go ahead. I said, okay. You know, this is nobody around, right? It's just, no, it's just us. So I rode around. It was a fairground. So it was, I'm driving all around the thing. This and So I get to the back gate, and the back gate is way down off the exit of turn four. Mm-hmm. And that's had a long, long straight. I mean, for a mile and a half, the straightaway was killer long, right? Right. So it was way down the end. So I go driving down by the back gate, and it's open. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. And I pulled my car, 68 Pontiac Cantalita. And I pull up, and I put the front wheels on the racetrack, and I look around, and there's nobody around, right? And I'm like. Yeah, was this af- uh, by the a, dog leg on the back? Uh, no, this is off of turn four. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, you may have said turn three. I meant turn four. Okay. So it was off it in, and you came down. So that, that, and that's what that was the only entrance to the track. Is you cross there, and then everybody came down that long pit road there, you know, and then pulled in behind the thing, and they all, you know, um, t- but that's the only way across the track. So I'm like, uh, so I drive back. I'm like, I better not. So I go and I pull into the thing, and I walk in the door, and the parents are going at it. No problem. I mean, the party's flowing, right? <laughs> it's like, okay, so I get back in the car. Right, and this is a half an hour's gone by, 45 minutes, you know. So I go back in the car, and I'm like, I, uh, I pull on the racetrack. And I'm like, all right, and I take a lap, right? <laughs> Just driving around nice and easy. I'm like, oh, okay. I pull back in, pull back to the front clubhouse. And I go in there, and they're, they're having a ball, right? It's going. I was like, okay. I get back in the car. <laughs> Same thing again. Now I'm brave, man. I'm going, right? And I'm driving around the track, driving around the track, and I'm going, I'm going. A 68 party, I kind of had a, what, 389 in it or whatever, something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going down the front straighter. I remember the last time I looked, it was 110 miles an hour. Oh, wow. I'm going by the front stretch, right? So I go into court one or two. I'm like, okay, now I'm getting brave. So I come by the next lap. And I'm going like 120, right? Well, you know how parties are when they're going and they're all having a good time. And for some reason, it gets to be a quiet moment. Right, a lull. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the lull in the party came as I came flying down the straightaway at 120 <laughs> miles an hour. And I go into turn one. And we've been in enough street stock races you hear. As the car's going up the rail, and I'm like, I was half scared at the time, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm like going in the corner to like a buck, right? And the parents are like, I mean, my dad, a rock, Joe Gerber, my father, you know, whoever, all the other, whatever officials there, right? So I'm still going, and they come back out, and there's a rock stand, and now the gate by the flag stand was right there, and a rock steps out, and I come whizzing by it about 100 miles an hour, and it gives me one of these, and points over the thing man oh is he mad right so i'm like oh i'm screwed right is it that? but it was awesome right <laughs> so i come in right? i'm like okay and they're like they're la- they're all laughing right? Ray Sing- i mean uh, bill singer was the announcer there he was great they're just laughing their ass off he goes all right that's enough of that he goes we don't feel like going to a funeral today <laughs> now, and, so wait and- we get in the car to go back to the hotel mm-hmm. right and now we just we just pulled in with so then we were all afternoon. And my dad's, you know, they're pretty good. So we're getting in we're getting in the car, getting ready to go to the hotel. And my dad goes to my mom, he goes, Didn't we have a full tank of gas when we got here? <laughs> my mother's like <laughs> she looks at me in the back and she goes, He goes, Didn't we stop? Didn't we stop and get gas before we got here? And my mother's like, no, no, no Dutch, you were going to, but we didn't stop. I had a quarter of a tank of gas. I burned three quarters of a tank of gas <laughs> driving around. How many life. laps do you think you turned? I, a day. lot. I'm telling you because but by the time I got a lot, I probably drove around a track for about a half an hour. But but what I find interesting about uh, Trenton was Trenton was an oval with a right hand in the middle right. of the back straightaway. Right. Like you went down the back straightaway and then had to make a right, right. because yeah, yeah. it was shaped. And like it was a, it, it was, was shaped like a lima bean. Yeah, exactly. It was banked fairly deep. The story of uh, the story was it was the mile. And they wanted to make it a mile and a half oval. Mm-hmm. And some lady off the backstretch there didn't want to sell her property. So they could have pushed the whole backstretch out to make it an oval. So that's what happened. They kept the front stretch of the, the mile, down the whole thing, turn one and two, and then we got about three quarters of the way down the backstretch. Mm-hmm. And then that's where you made the right-hand turn, and it shot off 
up in the distance, and then turn three and four was banked like 22 degrees. Right. And then the front straightaway on that thing was, I'm telling you, if you look, it's probably like half the backstretch of Daytona for a mile and a half. Right. It was, and it a, was just. It was a big track. It was awesome. That. I mean, that, to me, that's my favorite track in the world. Now, here as a kid, I'm working, my dad's working a track. I'm a kid. I worked pit road, stop and go sign for pr- during the practices. So I'm standing down at the end of that pit road here. I'm standing like right here. Right. And watching these guys zinging into turn one at about 160 miles an hour. Yeah, because that was the fastest was, point of the track yeah. in oh, down yeah, at the right. turn one. And then those cars, all homemade, all, you know, they, they were um, uh, aerodynamically naive at that time. Yeah. You know, right. but the idea, well, I, to me, they used to float down that front stretch. The cars just... Just that's the way they were. Right. I mean, well, big under, blocks, under throttle, giant the, tight. The right, the they would get in there, and th- that's the way they, they see. And then they would just dive off into turn one. It was just, it was cool. So yeah, I used to stand as you know, I used to stand at the end of pit road, and watch those guys zing by. It was just, it was awesome. I mean, I, like I said, again, fortunate right. to do to do all that stuff. And then the very first practice when we were there in in '70 when we worked the regular Trenton races because mm-hmm. we the first year we ran there was '70 with the modifieds. Right. Well, my dad, they had no lights. Well, my dad worked the dog leg. As the, he was the lone flag man with the caution because they literally couldn't see around. I thought they the hung dog. a big... Uh, one later of the, on. The I'm talking the, fir- the first... Over the track. Yeah, later on. But the okay. first year, there was nothing. There was no lights. Oh, okay. So they had... So he worked. So he, it was, he said... So I got to go work the second practice with him standing in, the, in that dog leg. And that was, that was like... Because wow. those guys had no... They didn't know what they were... Some guys would come off a two against the wall and straighten it out that way and be on the inside going into turn three. Some guys came all the way down to the bottom and would straighten the dog guy that way so they'd be on the outside going into turn three. And then some guys tried to shoot it through the middle, lift, whatever. And, you know, that was so everybody had different ideas of getting through there. Yeah, the dog leg was was something I never saw. Uh, It was wild to see. The funny thing is, is that if you sat like in the grandstands, it didn't look that big of a right-hand turn, but no, if you looked was. at it as you come off the corner or right. looked at it right. going into uh, that dog leg, it was a hard what, right you know, hand. Like well, sure. When you drill, you come down that thing. You can't right? do that. It any- went like this. You literally could not see the straight. You couldn't even see turn three. Mm-hmm. That's how... How, right, it was almost like being much, at a road course. Yeah, right. And like, it was and like, and it looks flat, but it was cool to like watch. Jeff, you know how dangerous Jeff's that is, though, with the way the cars are set up now, yeah, with the stagger they run, with the left side weight. Like, there's no way they can make a, a right hand turn that hard anymore yeah. now. And yeah, right. Yeah, they so well, they would square them up. I mean, it's half. Oh, a, you know, it depends on. You know, what I'm saying they would, like, what made them the guys that were so fast there were the coil spring guys, because now you could put a heavy coil spring on the left side of the car, because of that dog leg. You know what I'm saying? And and not worry about it. And that was the whole thing. If he went in and the trick, Jeff Bonine was the one that figured it out. That's why he was so fast there. He said the trick, and I've talked it well, talking to Todd, and we, because I've talked about that car all the time, and talking to Jeff, the trick was to be able to come off a of turn two and put it on the deck and not lift till you got back to the flag stand. Wow. Yeah. That's ballsy. Yes. Yeah. And Jeff was the first one to figure, you know, to be able to do it, and that's why he was so fast there, yeah. you know. All right, let's move a little okay. bit uh, forward in the yep. career. Let's yep. get to the spotting stuff. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you have spotted for a bunch of different guys over yeah. the years. You were telling me this one great story. I think it was about Brian Clawson. You got him his first Yeah, oh, I tell you, you remember that story, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, that's tell, me, Lauren, tell Lauren, me the Brian Clawson yeah. story. Lauren Rainier was... Um, Great spot, guy. We've had got, him on the show. Oh, okay, right. Mm-hmm. Worked for Ganassi, right? Spotted for, for Jamie McMurray, all his, but worked at driver development deal, mm-hmm. right? And um, so we're in, I'm spotting eh, a couple things here and there, and that, but uh, doing some truck stuff. Right? So Lauren calls me up on Monday and he goes, Carl, you going to Gateway this weekend? And I'm like, uh, I, don't, I don't even remember who I was spotting for. I'm pretty sure it was the trucks was running there. Right, because probably trucks running with ARCA, right? Well, Cup was out in Sonoma mm-hmm. that weekend. So he calls me up. He says, uh, so you going to Gateway this weekend? Spot? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm doing XYZ, whoever it was. And he goes, you want to win the ARCA race? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> and I'm like, um, yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to say no, right? I'm like, yeah. I said, yeah. What, what? He goes, Brian Clawson's running, um, going to run there in our car, in the Ganassi car, this and that. 
And uh, he says, uh, I, I'd like you to spot for us there if you would. He says, I think you'd do, you know, do a great job. He says, you're going to win. He goes, we're going to be badass, you know. So I'm like, yeah. I said, yeah, awesome, right? So go in there, meet him, Brian. And, oh, my God, what a great kid. His dad, um, I can't remember who was the crew chief on it, the young guy at the time, really great people. So we had fun, right? So good, badass car, right? Mm-hmm. Leading the thing, so yeah, no, whatever. Started up front, done it. Race is going on. Okay, we're leading, and no, nothing crazy to do. You know, we just take care of them. Uh, come in. So I pit stops, did whatever middle of the race, and oh, I can't think of her name. It was racing then. Uh, Ray Everhands. Oh, uh, wife. Aaron, uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Crocker. Uh, Crocker, well, then, then Crocker. She was Crocker. Now she's right. Aaron Everham. Yeah. In in good yeah. stuff. In she's cool. Fast, we worked together at Speed Sport. Yeah, okay. really sweet Bad person. fast. Mm-hmm. So whatever restart this was, right? Brian's on the pole. She's outside pole. Dropped the, now you know how Gateway was, right? How long, long Gateway the long ass, and then the pace car pulls off super early, right? Well, the Arca deal. There was only a line then. There was no restart zone. It was just a line. So you couldn't go before you got to the line, and then that's when you had to go. So you get to, okay, okay, get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay, go, and he hammers it, spins the tire. She drives off, right? Takes him 10 laps or so. Run, I mean, she drives off. Mm-hmm. Takes him 10 laps, runs it down, takes the lead, da 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 30 laps to go, caution comes out again. Come in, pit. Whole deal, same scenario, right? He's on the pole, this and that, and it's, you know he's young guy, sprint car guy. You know he uses green flag. You know young green comes out, man, just mash right, it. Sprint right? car races are gas ma- uh, gas mashers. Same yeah. thing again. <laughs> Spins the tires, she leaves him, takes him ten or so laps or so to run him, run her down. Caution comes out again. So now we're down to like twenty something laps to go, right? And he's like, what am I going to do? You know, this is, he goes, what am I doing? I said, just don't, just be a little easier on the throttle than just caution. Like I said, restart again. She beats him again, right? Caution comes out third time, 10 to go. And he's like, I said, all right, now, Brian, listen to me. This is what you're going to do. I said, when that pace car pulls off, right, I want you to pick up your speed. Don't drive. Just keep steadily picking up your speed, picking up your speed, little by little, don't go crazy. Just just get to a more comfortable thing. And when you get to that line, I said, when you get a good, comfortable start, you know, you're already going to be going faster. I go, drop it in high and then step on the throttle and go. And he checked out. <laughs> Won the race. We come in the pits. His dad said, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. He goes, and I, later on, I talked to him, I seen him. He never forgot that. And he used to use that on a lot of his restarts. And I learned that from Freddie Harback and Frankie Schneider. That right, because that was something told, that you used to do, right? Yeah, well, because learning from them. If Frankie Schneider used to tell us that being on dirt, that he never, he says, I never restart in third, fourth gear, Don, no Don Gall, it starts as we, he goes, high gear, let it go. He goes, I don't need to be breaking rear ends or trannies. He goes, even if I lose a spot or two, I mean, he was so good anyway, he was going to get him back. Mm-hmm. He said, but I never, you know, but, and he never forgot that, you know, and his dad said, that's the coolest thing I ever heard. Who else have you gone to victory lane with spotting? Um, the only one in that genre was Park, Steve Park, okay. Steve Stephen, as our you know as Long, we Long Island guy. Long, Long Island, Island does know him as Stephen. I, I watched know. I watched him race go karts yeah. on Long Island at 14 years old. We used to bet on him for God's sake. Yeah, sakes. I remember watching him as a kid in, in mini modified. Yeah, you know, exactly. we've Stephen. On, we've had him yeah, on the show here. Yeah. Well, I, I seen the one a couple of years ago. He had well, so many great ago. stories. Him oh, and Tommy. His, right. Oh, and you race with and then well, his stories too about Earnhardt are just fabulous. You know. But so yeah, we won. Um, so all Kelsey. those years, so all those years of spotting, you went to Victory Lane with Brian Clausen and Steve. And, Park. and Steve, and that was it. Yeah, that was on it. That, in really? that level, yeah, never, you know, because I didn't have the, but you look know, at all the big you name know, guys but, that you've, you've, you've. But I had a lot for. of fun. I mean, it was Landon Castle, we just Hillman's deal. We just would just, cl- you know, we we were that fifteenth place car, you know. So we had a top five or six. We, you know, we had a great day. Christ, we finished third at Talladega one year. Mm-hmm. You know, it was awesome. That was, you know. So you had stuff like that. You had to take it, but, you know, it was... Was he the youngest you've worked with? Who's that, Landon? Landon. Was he the youngest? Pro- well, I, I've worked with some other ones younger, and I, I can't really, you know, me, which I liked. I kind of liked Let me ask you a question, and, yeah. and we've been posing this to a lot of the guests that come okay. in, and we're, we're seeing guys getting moved up the, the ranks quicker and quicker and quicker. What is the emphasis on moving kids up to the top levels of racing so early? I, mean, I don't know. You know, I think they well. I mean, we know the driving force is M O N E Y, 
money. Depends yeah. on how deep daddy's pockets are, you know, to get you in the better good stuff and all that. But um, I guess they just figured the earlier you start in this stuff, the more you learn, the better, you know, you get into the XYZ car, whatever it is, you have more instead of going go-karts for or whatever and then getting into, you know. I mean, look at that was it that heart tag kid at 12 years old running a modified. The heart, oh, Paulie Hartwig. Heart, heart Hartwig, rather. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, right. I was going to say, what do, I mean, oh my God. what do you think about a 12? You come from I, old school. You ran modifieds. You started in your right, 20s, right? right? You were yeah, 20-something years yeah, old. Yeah. What is your take on a 12-year-old running a modified? I mean, I've seen I him race before. I, He's a talented I, 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 kid. I get it. But I'm, right. I'm trying to get other people's takes on it. And I like it's the family. It's, I, they right. work their I, asses oh, I get off. It, right. And I the get father it. is super cool. He's helped my brother in the past right. racing quarter midgets right. and stuff. But I mean, I don't know. We're I'm, seeing. I'm I'm mixed. I mean, because okay, he if he is exceptional, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, Jeff Gordon was really young doing whatever, and then, they, but does it open up the door for the other twelve year olds that aren't that um, ready? to do that or, or uh, have the maturity. Apparently, maybe the kids, I don't know him well, you know, apparently he must carry himself with a decent maturity at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That to be, you know, to be like, but, you know, they're not, you know, they're 12 year olds. It's right. like, you know, uh, uh, Timmy Fido had told me a story spot for somebody at Turkey Derby was like about that young age and they got into something like that and he's like, what am I going to do? And he goes, you ain't going to get out of the car. He goes, you're 13 years old, going to kick the crap out of you. You know, you can't, you know how you're a big man on racetrack. Right. You better be a big man when you get out of the car too, oh, you know, but, yeah. and he was like, oh, I'm going to, he goes, you know, the guy was like 30 something and whatever, what he goes, no, you're not because you're going to get your ass kicked. You know, so I don't know. It depends on you know. I, don't get depends. me wrong. I definitely think there is a place for kids racing. Right. Absolutely, there right. totally is. Yeah. Um, it, I, it depends. I, and and, and, don't, and you know, someone like uh, uh, these, like these kids. Some of them are exceptions to the rules because yeah. they're super yeah. talented. Like I think Paulie Hartwig the third is yeah. an exception to the rules. Right. Kyle Larson definitely an exception yeah, right, to the exactly, rules. Yeah. You know these guys have just incredible natural ability. Brent yeah. Cruz is another one that you're going to be hearing a lot about right. in a couple of years too, because just their natural ability. Right. But that's one person. Exactly. You, you know we exactly. We, there's, there's not you know diamond in the rough as they say. You right. know, like I said, Jeff Gordon was a <laughs> was a you know like you said you could see it. So you know maybe this kid's got it, but I think others maybe they'll they'll try it. Like other parents might have that. And then when the kids aren't even close, then maybe they'll realize, okay, hopefully they'll take a step back and right. get, you know, get the thing. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've watched, you know, I've been helping Tommy ball one out the last, this summer. With his, his two boys are just badass. Yeah. They're just great kids. A lot of talent. And play, as but, quick but, as they've caught on, too. Exactly. Oh, and he just, I was there because he was doing Legends cars with him. You know, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and he said he goes that was a waste because those legend cars would just suck. You don't learn anything from them. He goes, and I was surprised when I bolted them in the crate cars. He he was surprised how well, and then they both have been. But their maturity, you know, they got great parents. You know, mm -hmm. their their maturity is just they're, they're just a respectfully. You know, we went we went to Caraway this year, and uh, both boys in the crate car, and then is Caleb Hetty that drives his smart tour car. Mm -hmm. Same thing. He's just turned twenty. Another super nice kid, smart, um, like I said, respectful, right? Mm -hmm. So we go to the track. We had a practice session. That was just the two boys. And they got all done at the end of the day. And, and both of them, both, now, now Jack is just 20 and Luke just turned 17. And they get done. And say, I, every one of the guys, thanks, guys, for coming out, helping us today. Really appreciate it. You know, da, da, da. So we went to the racetrack and raced. Same thing at the end of the night. You know, now that the one night, it's, now Tommy and I had a little, differences spotting wise <laughs> uh, yeah didn't didn't never it's very end was not very good at all so anyway so i helped tommy like i said we modified stuff is great and, and that's history and who cares but so when i was helping him out and we were going to caraway that one race uh he goes hey Carl, she goes you gotta come this week because i'm cleaning the cars and help them detail them and you know one with, one with barry Cantor, you know help him that's kind of what i like to do you know and just help out just he's only five miles from my house the right. shop mm -hmm. <laughs> So, um, um, what do you call it? So we um, go to the track, and and I, I says, "Oh, you coming this weekend?" He goes, uh, "Yeah, yeah." He goes, um, "You want a spot for Jack?" <laughs> I was like, "Are you sure?" 
<laughs> it's like, you know, I love you like a brother and I love you kids. I'll be like, I go, yeah, no, no, no. I want you to spot. He goes, I was like, I asked him like four times. He goes, yeah, no, no, no problem. So we did okay there, Cap, but then we went to Hickory and Caleb won that night mm-hmm. in the modified. Jack won the crate race. Mm-hmm. I spotted. Luke finished second. Right, badass night. It doesn't get much better than that when right. you show up with three race cars. Right, right. Jack's yeah. first win. Now Luke's already won two down in, in Smyrna, Smyrna and the championship. And the championship. Mm-hmm. Gotten that late model. He's been just great in it. You know, just trying to get the right thing. And uh, so, and we so it was just you know it was just great to win with him this and that. So same thing that night. Both boys come over. Thank you, you know, especially Jack's on the moon because he won his race. But still, and then Luke still thanked every one of us and Caleb. That you know, we were excited. He won the race, and of course, now the boy's doing so good. But at the end of the night, he came over to each and every one of us and shook our hand and thanked us for coming out and helping. That's cool, you and know, it, that's worth more than anything. It, you know, and don't get me wrong. I, you know, like I'm, I, I'm not, you know, against kids racing. I I find myself having right, this balance. Mixed. Like it's I mixed. like watching one of the. Right. I like watching these young kids running competitively and right. putting on a show. I don't like when I'm behind the wheel and I get cleaned out by one. Exactly, well, and that's what's going to happen. Where if it does happen, like I said, if the kid goes on and has no problems, but if there's an issue, that's going to be the first thing, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Or if he does lose his mind because he's 12 years old and he'll be 13 next year, because there's still, you know, you know, you think, you know, somebody mentioned that talking about him. I think Finan had said it. Goes, he goes, at 12 years old, he goes, I don't know, I was always lucky I was sitting in the grandstands, I could keep track of what the races are going on, and this kid's on the pole at Riverhead Raceway, you know. It's just amazing, so, uh, But, know. Uh, you know, if you're brought into, up to, you know, same thing, it depends, he's been brought up, he's around it, so I guarantee he's probably got a different attitude or aspect than most other parents want their Oh, he's super year respectful, old. too. Anytime right. I've talked so with him, he right. gives an interview, and, and right. yeah, exactly. he's a great, great That's what family. I mean. It's the upbringing, you know, and we all know that. It comes from, the kids stem from their parents. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're brought up in the, by, by their parents and brought up right and respectful, but, you know, we know, we know, we've seen those kids that have the money, and well, the parents are the same way. They think, well, I got this much money, you know, my kid deserves to be in this car. Yeah. kind of thing let me ask you one more thing we're getting close to the end of the yep. show we got to no wrap problem. it up yep. but one of the other things that i Sorry. wanted to ask you was about longevity in this sport right now you've been around for a while crewman driver spotter uh, right. you drove a motor coach yep. too for a while yep. too yep. what is it that you have to do to keep that longevity in this sport like we like we said respectful just Keep your head down. Don't be a smart. I mean, I'm a smart ass, you know. But don't at the right, you know. Be be respectful. Don't you know? Like I said, I I get to be a smart ass about stuff once I get to know people and I know my situation. But when you're doing it, you know, you just you know you you learn. You, the biggest thing is learn from other people. Listen to what they have to say. And I always say, when you go into a new situation, no matter whose it is, like I was taught as a young kid, there's three ways of doing things. Because my dad being a cop and a marine and working for Freddie Harbax and Norman Tosti, another Marine, mm-hmm. Norman was. There's three ways of doing things. The right way, the wrong way, and my way. <laughs> and whenever you go to work for whoever you go to work for, it's their way. Right. And you and then and I would tell people that that would come help me. I had couple guys that started out and I would say that. I go, look, if I tell you to take the right rear off and bolt it on the left front, don't question me, do it. Mm-hmm. And then later on you could say, What in the hell will you think? But that's what I'm saying. And then I'll explain to you later why. And then you could say, well, that was stupid. You know, okay. But that's, and that's the way I look at it. So any, what, wherever I went, so whatever shop I go into, that's okay. It's your your ball game, whatever you want to do. Right. You know, instead of going and say, oh, I, I know better. And, you know, I could do this. You know, once you get to know whoever and then they know, maybe you know something or you know what you're talking about, then they'll listen to you. Mm-hmm. You know, but if you go right in and say, oh, no, this is not, the, you know, and we do have that, you know, especially being modified guys, yeah. and New Yorkers and law, we know better. You know, and we have a better idea of doing stuff, but you got to, you know, you got to flow with it. You know, you gotcha. gotta, that's, the, that's the way I look. That's the way I figure, you know. You know, I, I just, <clears throat> I just lied. I said we're about to wrap the show up, but okay. I've got one more, th- one sure. more uh, story if I can get oh. out of you. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. Because, and I almost forgot to bring this up, too. Okay. But uh, you had shared it with me. Right. A- and uh, you had told me that your dad passed away the night you won. Oh, yeah. The yep. night, your yep. dad passed away the night yep. you won, won your first race. Won my first race, race. ever. Yep. Oh, Tell yep. us that story. Okay. 
it's it's a lot of parts to it. But and and when I tell the story, like when I get talking to people and the YMCA I go to working out, um, you know, it's stuff like that will come up, and I'll tell, and they're like, "Oh my God, are you, you know, are you all right to tell? Don't mind telling the story because it's it it just shows you the respect people had for him and the love that's in the sport, and, and we say that, and and it's it's a family sport, mm-hmm. and we're in tight, close, you know, and it is. I mean, it just and that showed it. So. Um, we'd been at Riverhead the night before running our street stocks, but we were called Grand Ams that night at Riverhead. So we were like the show. So my dad calls me up, and we'd never done this before. And he says, Miller, how are you getting to the track tonight? I said, oh, I'm going out with Greg in the car. And he goes, now, grab your helmet and your, fire, your, your helmet bag and your fire suit, and I'm going to bring you out to the racetrack like the superstar you are. You know, like Bugsy walking in, you know, that, that was kind of at was the end of the drive yeah, river yeah, Right. We were going to okay. go out, stop, have lunch. Never done that before, ever, right? We go out to that, that night, have a great night, right? And I have a picture of us together before the start of the race, last picture together. And just, and then he went to Riverhead. And it's funny, now all the tracks he's flagged, he's never flagged at Riverhead. Oh, yeah. Never, right? And, uh, but he went out there and he had been to the track in a while because he was doing stuff with Stafford. And this is 1980. And he was doing stuff at Stafford here and there. So he went out there, and they went. He had a blast because, oh, Dutch, you know, I hadn't seen him in a while. This They had him throw the green flag for the start of the race, right? So and we, so I had a good night, finished whatever. I, I think Robin Volmo won. I finished second. McElhone finished third, right? Mm-hmm. Great night, right? Started in the back. had a, So he's high, right? And, you know, you have that feeling. I had it with my modify, and you all – you know that win is coming. Right. You know, you ever had, you, you know, <laughs> yeah. tomorrow night is our night. Right. You know, and we were saying, we were saying tomorrow, and he's like, hey, tomorrow's, we're going to win tomorrow. You know, and like I said, my dad, you know, he had a race given to him. He never, when I won my first heat race, he flipped off the, off the moon. Right. So tomorrow night's our night. Yep, you're right. And we went home that night, stopped at a couple of gin mills on the way home. Right. A couple of his spots. He know, like I said, we had a blood, never, just never did that. Gets home, so I'm still doing all this. The street stock, I'm still working on Freddy's race cars. It's Saturday. Saturday was get ready for the week deal, you know, prepare. It's ice slip, you know, we got to get everything ready. So a phone rings in the afternoon, about you know, one o'clock or so. It's my old man. And Colton's just talking to Freddy. And he's telling me, he goes, Yeah, man, the kid was also last night, you know, and I could say Freddy's, you know, smiling, listening to my old man, you know. And, uh, and he goes, Yeah, so. He goes, hey, Dutch is on the phone. So I get on the phone talking. He goes, I had some parts we ordered for this new motor we were building, Boss 302, right? And that's another crying shame. We cut up a 69 Boss 302 Mustang for the motor. Right. Yes. <laughs> At the time, you don't realize <laughs> it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, man. So anyway, we had the parts for this that we were going to build this motor for next year, right? So he's got oh, the flywheel come in, you know, this and that. It was an aluminum flywheel. You weren't supposed to have an aluminum flywheel. So he's all excited, right? I'll get the parts to Okay. So we're talking. So he says, you know, he says, I'll be out there tonight. He goes, yeah, no problem. And he goes, um, um, the last thing he said to me, he goes, all right, Miller. And because it's being a cop, that was, you know, it was a term of the day. He says, all right, Miller, I'll meet you in Victory Lane. I said, you got it, Pop. I hung up the phone, got in his car and went for a ride. Car wasn't running good. It was having all kinds of problems backfiring. That. His street so, car. His street car, mm-hmm. right. And back then, lived on Long Island, Belmore. We used to take his car for a ride to test it out. He used to get on the uh, Wanto Parkway and go down to Jones Beach. There was the tower down there, and he would pay the toll. was still up then. Pay the toll and then go around and then come back home. As soon as he pulled through the toll booth, the car erupted in flames. And they figured it wasn't running right. It had raw gas inside the car. Because they had to call me in and ask me later on what happened, you know. Because there was things going on with cops then at the time. He just retired, and it was the car still ran. It was it was fine, and just the inside of the car was up in flame. You know, burnt, he burnt eighty percent of his body. Uh, died two weeks later. What? what so how did uh, the car burst? Well, flame? that's what happened. So they called me in. The Conway had the car, and they were trying to figure out. And I looked down, and I still have it today. His cigarette lighter is laying on the floor, open. And I said, "When did this happen?" He goes, "Literally like." Five feet out of the toll booth. I said, I know my old man. I said, car wasn't running. Apparently, it filled. I said, now does this make sense that it filled up with raw gas? You know, gas because the car was had exhaust leak. You know, the floor was rotted out. It was an old '70 Chevelle, 
And they said it was running. Black smoke was coming out of the car when he was running. He was trying to figure out what was wrong with it. I said, could it have filled up with gas fumes? And I said, I know my dad. And he gets to toll booth, takes a cigarette out, lighters in his hand, takes the receipt back, and flips that switch. And it went up. <clears throat> and he then they figured. It. He didn't smell the gas in the car. It erupted. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh. You know, you've been in the car. You know how it is. You're driving if it was, not used. you're not, you know, you, you, when you're riding along, probably, it, it, <clears throat> we don't know. You know, that's so, anyway, so now I go win that night. And uh, we have no idea, naturally, because this happened at like 6 o'clock, right? Yeah. Um, before, but, well, it happened right after. I mean, it literally, he hung up the phone and went in his car and went for a ride. Right. This is before cell phones, before, before, nine, anything, before right. 911 19, was ever invented, right? right? 19, oh, still what? But so, yeah, it was 1980. Right. So, all right. So, go to the track, go do whatever. And there's a picture somewhere, and I don't have it. It was like somebody personal. You could see me get out of the car, and I'm like, looking. I'm waiting. I'm expecting my old man to be right there, you mm -hmm. know. So the only thing I meant, so we did whatever, and we raced the modifier. So we're having a grand old time, right? My first win ever. I'm riding around the back of pickup trucks, right? You know, we're drinking and this and that. So the track gets a phone call about what happened, right? Muriel, my mother's, my, my dad's wife at the time, called up, told him, because then it kind of gotten out. Was Frank, your mom George, working at the track at the time? Uh, was she working in the booth? My mom was, no, she wasn't working at the track anymore. She quit oh. working at the track and she would just come watch me. Okay. Um, a moment, yeah, she was there because I have a picture of her in Victory Lane. So she was there that night, you know. Um, like I said, they weren't married married anymore. She was He was married to this other lady, Muriel. Um, so she called, the, the, she got all the, because this happened at three, four o'clock. Da, 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 took her to the hospital at six. You know, in Meadowbrook, in the burn unit, right? Burned but bad, 80% of his body. Mm. And uh, the only thing that wasn't burned on was like his his backside and his back because he's sitting in the car. Right. And uh, sitting in the seat. So uh, she calls the track at like 11 o'clock by the time she got home and got settled, called the track, explained to him what happened and said, you know, he's in it, you know, what, does he need to, you know, we need to rush him there. It's like, no, it's settled now. You can't, when you're in the burn unit that bad, you have to wear all kinds of special Right, you can't go stuff. in there because of infection. Right, exactly. So she said, no, you can't, you know, okay. So they explained it to Dot that ran the office back then. So she gets a hold of a rock, Bob rock, and tells him, right, what's going on. Now, there already was something going around. George Wagner had heard. George Wagner Modified. Long Island, but yeah, right. Modified but Long Island, yeah. mm -hmm. Nassau County Highway Patrolman, mm -hmm. right? Well, apparently one of his buddies, fan, was in the grandstands and knew, had heard the call and knew what was going on and told, had told Georgie, right? This after the races that, that, yeah, Dutch Miller was in a bad accident thing, blah, 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 blah. So it kind of a little bit so they tell O'Rourke so O'Rourke's like alright we gotta go get Carl and tell him so him and Walt Etzel now you know Big Walt Etzel mm -hmm. they love him to death he's a great guy so they go alright we need to go get Freddie Harback let's tell Freddie we'll tell Carl together so Walt goes and gets Freddie tells him what's happened so he should, so Freddie's like is there anything you can do right now and this is like midnight now you know he goes, is there any, does he like, can, if he leaves right now, will he be able to go see his dad? Does he need blood? Is there something he can do for him right now if we tell him right now and he can go there right now? And he said, no, no, he can't, like if he's going to do anything, they can't even, you can't even go and see him till tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? He says, give the kid another hour. He goes, just won his first race ever. Look at him. As they're talking, oh, we're riding around, you know, da, 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 da. He says, so, he says, just give him, give him a few more minutes. Let him, let him enjoy this and we'll go tell him. Wow. So Conway and them and Hertz and they went and had found it. So him and uh, Freddie and Conway and, and Wagner and them didn't get along too well at the time to begin with. They were not happy. They want, you gotta tell Carl. You gotta, she says, look, take care of it. He goes, he can't do nothing. He can't go see his dad till tomorrow. Look at the kid, you know, I was still, we're still, you know. Right. And everybody knows me, you know, everybody's, you're buying me. Uh, yeah. Let him have his moment. Let him, yes, let him enjoy. He says, we're gonna change his world and, and you know, in a half an hour, just to give him some time. So they were kind of, yeah. so Freddie and Walt, I'll never forget. I mean, they dragged me over by the, not dragged me, but called me over by the pit ramp and walked me up. Um, now, you know, I slept there. You walked up the, the the main, was the old drag strip there, but to where the bathrooms were in the cassette, that was the only telephone. There was the telephone booth right there yeah. outside the thing. 
So they walk me over there, and there's nobody around, and they tell me the whole deal. And, you know, what was going on is yes, so I remember Fiat Walt reaches in his thing and pulls out a quarter and says, yeah, call Muriel and find out, you know, talk to her and find out what's going on, this and that. So I was like, okay. So I uh, call, she tells me, she says, yeah, we can't do, you know, nothing in, this in the thing. We can, you know, go up to see him tomorrow, but it's not an easy deal. Now, Trenton's the following day, 19, 1980, was the last race at Trent turned out to be. So I'm standing with Freddie, so I'm telling him all of this. So I was like, all right, this cool. So, well, we're going to Trenton tomorrow, right? Because we were going to race Trenton. Freddie's like, no, you're not. No, we're not. He says, we're not. He says, we're not going to Trenton. We're going to see your dad. I'm like, ah, come on. I said, we can't. I said, come on, Trenton. I go, now I really feel bad. We're not going to go to Trenton. You know, my dad's a racer. He'd want us to go to Trenton and go mm -hmm. do whatever. He goes, no, we're going to see your father. And we didn't go. And he come got me the next day. And me and Freddie drove up to the hospital to go see my old man. Oh. And uh, he couldn't. So you had to go through that whole deal. Like I said, you had to wear all the gear and this and that. And you went in. So just me and Muriel went in. And they had him. He was... I was like a mummy, you know, you, you had him tied down the whole deal. So you're like, what do you do? Right. You know, what do you, how do you, so like the nurses say, just talk to him like normal. He says, even though he's, they got him in a coma because, you know, they, they scrub you in so much pain. And um, he goes, just talk to him like normal. Just, the, you know, he can, he'll be able to hear you and understand you. So just talk to you. So I'm like, what do you, you know, what do so, you say? Right. What do you say? <laughs> you know, hey, dad, how you doing? You know, right. what? And, I'm, and all I could think of is like, Pop, we won last night. Right. He went nuts. I mean, started frailing, arms going off, because now he's moving buzzers, alarms are ringing. He went, oh. and this and that. And then, so he's going like this. You know, he's grabbing up his hand like this, and I'm standing right by the bed. And he reaches up, and I'm like, I just, and I grab his hand, and I hold his hand like this. And the nurse comes in, and she's freaking out. Right? Oh my God! You can't touch him. No, this and that. Mira was like, "Leave him alone." Yeah. Just leave him alone. <clears throat> yeah. And so now, that was it. Never got another reaction out of him again. No, and he, like I said, he was like, and you, and he even like squeezed my hand, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Yeah, we won, man." I said, "We won that first one finally," wow. and uh, and then that was it. And then he just, and it was just his lungs were burning so bad. And but now. Two quick things. I know if you want to wrap this up, I don't want it to be forever. <laughs> it's okay. Paul McElerney. Mm -hmm. This is what Paul McElerney meant so much to me. That peck ahead, which he calls everybody, right? You get to be, yeah, you peck. It was a well meaning thing, right? Right. It was a term of endearment. So, yeah, right, exactly. Which started by his brother, right? You, if you were, when you were stupid, you'd stupid peck ahead, then it became whatever from there. He basically every day spent every single day with me through that whole time, that 14 days, because he died on the 14. Uh, we get, now he worked in, wherever he worked in, both our shops were in Huntington. You know, Joel's Formac shop was right there in Huntington, right? But he'd get done at the end of the day, and he'd call me or come see me, whatever. We went some, had some drinks and talked about every single night for a month, like three, four weeks after this, because he had lost his dad when he was younger and we had talked and he he said something to me that I've never forget and I've told guys like this that have, that lose their dads he told me something he says you know you're like oh yeah you know this and that and he says Carl he says Maynard <clears throat> he says, Maynard he says uh, as time goes on you're going to miss him more he goes because you're going to go do something and the first thing you're like oh man I can't wait to tell dad you know what you know when am my first modified race are you kidding me you know stuff like that, and then I never forgot. And I always told, and Paul said that he goes, he goes now because Paul said he goes, my dad never seen my racing career, you know, and he goes, he would have absolutely been over the moon to yeah. see what I've done in racing and stuff like that. And then this is only eighty, mm -hmm. you know, he hadn't even even scratched the surface yet right. on what he did. But every, I mean, we were together every, you know, like I said, got together at some point. Had you had During, one? Had you had won a modified race at Islip? Yeah. No, 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 no. I was no. going to say. 84. Been... 84 was my first year, the year the racetrack closed. Well, I wanted now, and I found this out later through Bob Copland, who was the statistician. Um, I was the first one, or the only one at the time, never won a modified race in their rookie season. Oh, really? Never. It had never happened before. It never. I'm like, never happened before then. At, uh, and it was at Riverhead. At Riverhead. At Riverhead. And I, but I was going to win the next night at Iceland, but we got rained out. Because you were on that hot, you were... We were 
You're on that you, hot streak. Oh, we knew. You know, you knew. We, we're starting up front, you know, which helped. You know, da 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 the whole nine yards like that. But you, I was like, oh, there was no stopping me. Well, we got rained out and ran the next week. Well, Al Hansen won the race, and I finished second at Islip uh-huh. in my rookie. You know, that was 84 in my rookie year. Gotcha. Which that would have been. But no, so I, I didn't able get to, to win. win. at Islip, you know, where your dad flagged that would have been yes. just amazing. You know, but it was you Islip. won there in the streets. Like, yeah, one three, one three or four there at, at, at Islip in the street stock. You know, yeah, God, almost yeah. one after he passed away that fall because now you're like the funeral and the wake and everything. It was just that's the way racing people. Like I said, the people that came, it was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, dad being a cop and then being who he was, it was the people were in and out. I'm, it was dude, like I'm tighter with some people in racing than I am yeah. with my some of my family yeah. members. So yeah. I understand when they exactly. say racing the, the, becomes a family. Yeah. The, the races flipped out because when they had the funeral, they, being a cop, so. They bring them out on their show, all the, the, the special escort. They carry the casket out on their shoulders, mm-hmm. right? So all our racing friends had never seen that before. And then, which I knew my old man loved because he was into, had the bad bagpipes playing mm-hmm. at the thing, right? The whole, put them in there. So now we take them, so we're in Belmore, right? Which you know is in like the middle of Long Island. Mm-hmm. We got to drive out to Calverton because being a Marine, buried them out of Calverton. There's, my grandparents are buried. Right. Yep. There's like 60 cars in the funeral procession, right? So we're driving out, going out to Long Island. So, and back to our quick, the funeral, the Jack Aroot, he was, because my dad was spending a lot of time up there at Stafford, and my dad got to know Jack real well. Senior. Jack Aroot, right. right. Jack Aroot, senior. Walks into the office on Wednesday, because the, the wake was Wednesday and Thursday, the funeral was on Friday. Walks into the the, sh- the office on Wednesday morning and says to the girls, he says, I guess you all heard about Dutch. He said, I'm going to take a ride down to Long Island and go see him. You can either come with me or you can have the day off. And he closed the office. And there was four girls in the office that worked the office, all got in the car and came down with Jack Root for five minutes wow. to pay their respects. That's, yeah, it's going to say that's, that's you know, respect. stuff. Then we go, so we're going to a funeral. They, they, this quick, because it's just, it's hysterical. We're driving to getting off to get, you know, like I said, there's 60 cars in the thing. I'm driving one of my my dad's car, actually, second row back with my stepsisters. And I'm looking at the thing, and we're just getting ready to pull off the thing. There's some traffic, and we're, you know, slow. You're going slow, naturally. And I look in the outside. Now, the night before, Karen Jazanbach came out, Charlie's wife, and her aunt. I said, Charlie's got to work because he worked Northville, the truck, the oil truck. And he worked the graveyard shift. He worked midnight till whatever, right? Mm-hmm say eight, nine o'clock in the morning, whatever it was. She goes, does Charlie want to be? He goes, he's going to try and make it to the funeral tomorrow because being a Calverton, it's like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, you're a great. Yeah. So we're pulling off and the traffic's light because it's like 10 o'clock in the morning, whatever it was. And we look in the outside lane, way in the back, and there's this tanker in the outside lane, black smoke billowing out of the pipes. It's Charlie J. <laughs> and he's Barreling, and he realizes because you know everybody's cars, you know who's who, and he, and he realizes what it is that it's us, right? And lays on the horn as he's driving by. Well, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I, you know, it's a Northfield truck, you know. By the time we got off, there was a traffic jam, probably took us about half hour or so, 40 minutes to get to the gate. Mm-hmm. We pull up, and there's Karen in the station wagon, and Charlie in the front seat changing his clothes. Wow. That, you know, it's respect. and it was just stuff, right? Exactly. It's it was just, it it's, it's just, and, and so you know, like I said, it is a good stuff. But that, that's to me, like I said, that's just you know, that's the way it was. That's the way funerals were. You right. know, I mean, the Ira and them and Conway and them, they they had they're in the out in the park a lot with the trunk open. It was an open bar, having beers, having beers and drinks <laughs> and making drinks. And, you know, that's but, yeah, Dutch and telling Dutch stories is right. what you know. Yeah, remember when you, you know, and that's what, what it was. It's know, what we do. It's what we, we've yeah. done over the years. Uh, so now racing is just fun for you, right? It's just something. Yeah, I really don't. Like I said, I just, I'm done, done, basically. You know, mm-hmm. and then this, this summer, and I don't know what's going to happen now. We know Tommy's going through a tough deal right now, but uh, uh, Baldwin. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've just been down. You know, like I said, I just went down there. I, I walked in. It was this time last year. Mm-hmm. And you know how everybody's Harry. Right, and the, I, his old man started that. Right. So, hey, Harry, this, and then you ask, hey, Skippy, whatever. So I was always with that, right? So I walked in the shop, and he won the championship, right, with 
the owners championship last year and won the smart tour championship for the modified, right? for the tour. modified yeah, tours yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so i walked in the, in the shop and i hadn't seen tommy in a while because his shop is right around the corner from our five miles so i walked in and go hey championship harry how you doing you know and, <laughs> and then just it went i say, oh, you know hey i'm right here and then you know there you land like four cars in the shop or whatever and then so i was like yeah i'll come help you out so i actually didn't get back there till um right around christmas time last year and he was getting there, I walked in the shop, and there's eight race cars in there. <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap. You know, so I started helping him out, and then talking, he was going to New, he goes, yeah, we're taking six cars to New Smyrna, four drivers, right. you know, five drivers, whatever, you know. He had Doug Colby, and th- yeah, it was just like, and I, so I helped him, yeah, so I've been doing that, and, and helping him, like I said, I love I love his two kids, and just helping him. So, you know, just was doing that, just go down there, clean the cars up, and go to the track a couple times. And, and the funny thing is, is, it's still like a core of Long Island guys because it's yeah, you know it's, Baldwin, Miller, you yeah, got Glenn Dixon yeah, working Dixon, on the right. car too, exactly. like all yeah, these Barry guys. Cantor, you know, Barry I mean, Cantor. It's uh, you know, it's, yeah. well, it, it's it's you know, it's just it's fun, you know. It's always fun, you know, just something to do and clean, you know, clean the cars up, go to the track, and still kind of stay involved a little bit. What a know? life, right? Yeah, exactly. It is. Oh, I, I like I said, I'm just lucky. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, you know. To do all of this, and like I said, this isn't half the stories. I mean, just well, the Brit. The best part is, is that you can come on a show like this and okay. share all these stories. Yeah, man, I mean, absolutely. Anytime. We I mean, have this had. Is, I was, you a know, lot I was of like, fun with you here today. I appreciate I mean, it. I could sit here and talk with you for a couple of I, hours. I, I appreciate longer. it. But uh, it was a I fun got, episode. I thank I, you for bringing all these pictures. Yeah, in. I wish pictures the, were unbelievable. And I yeah. mean. Listen, I, a picture's worth a thousand words, yeah. and I think we've probably got hours of oh, stories yeah. based it's, on the pictures. That you like just I said, have my here. mother. Like I said, my mother took that. My, she took pictures of like that. You know, people pictures. You know, at the parties and hanging out. I mean, Hold on you know, like I stuff. said, no one is. I mean, I looked. At, I came across some pictures. I'm looking at them. I'm wondering. I go. It was Charlie Jazanbeck's thirtieth surprise birthday party. You ever thought about calling Dick Bergeron and kind of contributing I, I, some I've of this showed stuff to some the, to the well, museum? I don't know. What I'm thinking of doing is he, he's got a deal. I mean, it's kind of good, but like that you can give him just give him your your albums like this mm-hmm. and they, they keep them in the thing. I'm like, yeah, I guess, you know, yeah, at least it would be somewhere, but they'd probably never get seen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be too bad if you can give them to somebody that'll kind of uh, maybe organize them even a little bit better. You know, I mean, it, there's just well, at some it, point, so much. At some point, sit down with somebody, tell them yeah, all the stories yeah, of these, yeah, and make yeah, sure you pass it off for the uh, next generation. Yeah, Seriously. Yeah, I mean, they are. I mean, it, it's 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 great. You know, yeah. it's great stuff. I, well, definitely going to call you so. to have you back. Yeah, I, I appreciate, it, man. Any anytime, Derek. That you know that. Great. I mean, this has been a blast. This is awesome. Thanks, Carl Miller. The Thriller yeah. joins us here. That's right. They Maynard, just, we can get into that. That's another. <laughs> that's what they used to call That's another two you. hours, yes. Yes. But Carl Miller joins us on the Derek Pernasiglio Show. It was a lot of fun to have him on. The stories were endless. And like always, we want to remind you to follow us on YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button. Follow us on our social channels on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Real DP Show and the Derek Pernasiglio Show. And be sure to check us out on Racing America, FUBU, and Tubi. So, like always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you the next time. Bye.